Hello, Popstar Plus. Today I'm giving you a special look into one of fashion's biggest nights, the Met Gala. I have had the pleasure of being here on these Met Gala steps for the past few years. So this time I'm gonna show you a look around so you can see what it's like behind the scenes. Stars, celebrities, and of course, those stairs. You look absolutely beautiful. Who are you wearing? Chanel is a couture spring summer from 1988. So this is Sergio Hudson. Can you tell us who you're wearing? Yes, I'm wearing Chloe. Giving some Chanel tweed moments. And here I've we are. never heard my name Chanel mentioned so many times. On this oh my carpet. God, that's you're the theme. The stars were serving glitz and glamour for fashion's biggest night. A benefit for the Metropolitan Museum of Art's Costume Institute, better known as the Met Gala. What is it about the Met Gala that people love so much? It brings all the stars together with all the best creatives potentially in the world. We're all in one room for one night. Who doesn't want to be here? This is the biggest show of the year right here. This is amazing. I drove to work at 5 a.m. this morning. They have been out here since almost 5 o'clock this morning. Wow. Everybody's waiting for you. Wow, well, thank God I came. Every look honoring Karl Lagerfeld, a force in fashion for over six decades, overseeing entire eras of style for fashion houses like Chloe, Fendi, and perhaps most famously, Chanel. Was honest, loyal, took risks, did what he wanted, loved life. He was a total genius, revolutionary, like a brilliant mind. His imagination, his creativity was like, had no limit. So what are we seeing? A lot of sequins, a lot of feathers, a lot of black and white pearls, a lot of Chanel. Outfits also adorned with special touches like bows, ponytails, and sunglasses, Lagerfeld's signature accessories. There were even a few tributes to his beloved cat, Shoe Pet. A little Doja Cat, anyone? Come here. Oh, no. Come here. Did he just purr to us? I knew Carl. Uh, he was always such a kind man. I could just imagine him looking down with a big smile on his face. Fashion wasn't the only hot topic of the evening, from film roles. I'm playing Carl in a movie. To official red carpet debuts and even big pregnancy announcements. Congratulations! Thank you so much! I love so much that you're walking the red carpet with your little bambino. What does that feel like? This is the first time I'm sharing my news. I can't imagine a more special place. We caught up with some of our fabulous favorites. I know, I know. How are you? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Are you on tour with Jenna Jackson? Come talk to our third hour oh friends. Oh my God, I love you so much. How many women here are rocking Charlotte Tilbury? Jessica Chastain, Kate Moss, Penelope Cruz, Salma, Salma Hayek. And we tried to get the inside scoop on what happens after the carpet. You never know what's going to happen in there. Well, that's what I was just about to say. Is that what you want to know? Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, you want the real answer. You're going to give us the real one. Come on, what happens I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, yeah. There are a lot of rituals. I don't like, know. A lot of people say satanic, and I don't feel like that's fair. This is the only place in the world where you see billionaires do this. <laughs> Once you go through that doors, you get handed gold bars, and you just eat caviar until you're full. <laughs> the night was just beginning for them, but for me, it was time to say a stylish goodbye. And that's a wrap for Met Gala 2023. Can I tell you a secret? It's been a long night. Another unforgettable night at the Met.
Welcome back. This year's Met Gala theme is Karl Lagerfeld, a line of beauty, honoring the late fashion designer. Here's an inside look at the exhibit by Met curator Andrew Bolton. This year's Met Gala honors an outspoken designer with a massive legacy in the fashion industry. Karl Lagerfeld died in 2019 at the age of 85, served as the creative director of Chanel for more than 30 years, and designed for brands like Fendi and Balmain despite being a controversial figure within the industry. He also helped put some of the world's fiercest fashion models on the map. Think Linda Evangelista and Claudia Schiffer, and more recently, Cara Delevingne and Bella Hadid. In addition to models, the designer worked with countless celebrities, including Kim Kardashian, Rihanna, and Gwyneth Paltrow. So how could celebs remember his contributions to the fashion world on the red carpet tonight? Perhaps by copying his signature style. We could see stars pay tribute to the icon's uniform, which through the years included leather gloves, dark sunglasses, and tailored white shirts. Celebrities may also choose to go big tonight, as dramatic ball gowns and bridal couture were among the styles he was known to send down the runway. Though he was also never afraid to make a statement, we could see celebs honor Carl by mirroring the zeitgeist with their fashion choices from politics to pop culture. The artist was also a master of marketing, and that could mean we see his famed logos on the Met carpet in one way or another. These famous interlocking C's became Chanel's logo under Carl's leadership. He also created Fendi's FF logo when he joined the brand in 1965. Finally, something to be prepared for tonight, a potential appearance from the late designer's beloved cat, Chopette. The famously pampered feline was adored by Carl, and the New York Post has reported that the kitty scored an invite to the gala. No word yet on if she's RSVP'd, but Chopette may give a whole new meaning to the term catwalk if she does choose to make an appearance. Pop Star Plus. I am here at the Met Gala, just steps away from the Mark Hotel, where many celebrities are known to get glammed up before heading over to the main event. In fact, check out a behind the scenes tour. Located on New York's iconic Upper East Side, this five star luxury hotel is just blocks away from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Just before the first Monday in May, dozens of VIP Met Gala guests check into the Mark Hotel, where they spend hours getting primped and pampered. Luckily, there's plenty of space in this high-rise hotel. The Mark Hotel has 106 rooms, 46 suites, and one penthouse. Come along with us to the 16th floor and we'll show you the largest penthouse suite in the United States. It takes a team of stylists, publicists, and hair and makeup artists to prepare a celeb for the Met Gala, so it's good to have a lot of space to spread out. 
The penthouse suite at the Mark Hotel is more than 10,000 square feet with five bedrooms, six bathrooms, a living room, and more. A rooftop terrace overlooks Central Park and includes a view of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. After getting ready, it's time to head to the gala, which means a scheduled elevator ride to the lobby because not everyone can leave at the same time. Just off the lobby is the Mark Bar, the home of our Live from Eastream, where we'll be in the middle of all the action on fashion's biggest night. After exiting the hotel, celebs will pose for photographers before getting into their car, which will whisk them away to the infamous Met Steps. Sticking with me here on Pop Start Plus, back in 2019, our Jenna Bush Hager sat down with Anna Wintour, who has been organizing the Met Gala since 1995. Take a look. Are you wearing the sunglasses because it, it, this is because the I haven't Met actually Gala. been to bed? <laughs> no sleep. No, very little. Very little. I literally was sitting down there making my list for next year. So you already have the theme for next year. Actually, for the next three. You have created this cultural institution, this thing that people can't wait to see. Are you surprised by how much it's grown? I am, and I honestly believe that the reason that people are excited is it's this extraordinary marriage of fashion and culture. And after all, we don't want a museum to become a mausoleum. Yeah. We want it to be alive and vibrant and bring in new audiences and have people be excited about being there. This doesn't mean hiking or being outdoors. <laughs> it is interesting when you say to people, <laughs> yes, the exhibition this year is going to be on camp, and you yes. see you know, the mind going, and they're thinking hiking boots, yes, backpacks, exactly. uh, rope. It's nothing about nature. It's everything that's completely artificial and fake and uh, not really what you think it means. So when you um, expect to see people walking down the red carpet, what will they be wearing? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I know we've had some very strange requests, um, people arriving in, uh, uh, on unusual methods of transport. And, and do you say yes to that? Of course. We want them to take risks, to be fearless, to have fun with fashion, and to, we all need to laugh at ourselves a little bit too. Is it true that there's a no selfie rule? There is. No, but what about that bathroom selfie a couple years well, ago? I, I don't you let that go. Well, I, I think there are other processes in place now that take care <laughs> of that. But it's not my department. Do you, people text you, though, and say, what do I wear? What does camp mean? Good? I've had some very interesting texts. I um, wish we could yes. read them. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> top secret. People see these red carpets. Might not be red. What color could it be? Well, I think you just have to think about camp. Could it be glittery? Sequins? I couldn't possibly tell you. <laughs> I gave you a hint. Okay. I think we're going to have an awful lot of feathers <laughs> on the whatever color carpet Monday night. Will you be in feathers? Well, that's a top secret too. You won't tell me? No, of course not. Is there a dream guest that has never come that you wish would, would make their attendance? Yes, definitely. I would love to have the Duchess of Sussex and the Duchess of Cambridge <laughs> together. That would be my dream couple. Could leave their husbands at home. Yes, it's leave two the husbands at home. two of them I want. For everybody, it's like the red carpet and the glamour of it. What makes it successful for you? What makes it feel like, all right, job well done? I mean, in the end, it, it, it's, it's for our guests and it's for the museum. And 
we want them to feel that the amazing effort they put into getting dressed was worth it and it was an evening that maybe they're not going to experience elsewhere. So each year, Anna, Anna, I feel like we should call her Anna, <laughs> chooses co-chairs to help her plan the event. This year, she'll have Gucci's Alexandra Michelle, Lady Gaga, Serena Williams, and Harry Styles, who she says is a Met virgin. Those are her words. Oh. Harry Styles has never been. Oh. Just like all of us. His last true. name is Styles. How is that possible? <laughs> I don't know. Like and he should go there. You know, Harry Styles. I know. One Remember direction. when he wore that pink suit here? It was amazing. Oh, that's right. but she seemed, I feel like Anna likes you. I think she does. I'm, I'm <laughs> surprised you say that with such well, you know surprise. She's such been here a time or two, and I find her to be very intimidating because she's so famous, and she's, you know, you think that she's looking at your outfit, and you know, well, you, you I can't tell say, because of the sunglasses. Yeah, I have to say, every pregnant woman anywhere knows what it's like to get dressed in this stage of six months of pregnancy, mm -hmm. and I tried on like seven outfits. Well, you looked beautiful. It was like going to the Met Gala myself. <laughs> Check out this next interview right here on our special Met Gala episode. All right, this morning on today's Talker, the Met Gala, Natalie's here with all of fashion's most exclusive events. It's a, red, a night that we all remember, and you said oh. you've seen a lot of red carpets. Over the top, what about pink fabulousness. Carpets? Yes, this was a fabulous pink carpet, so it already set the tone for what was going to be a very different late night. Lady Gaga, as you know, she set the bar high with an entrance that lasted <laughs> more than 15 minutes. It was all about performance, involved multiple outfit changes. <laughs> the camp theme, of course, on full display all night. Thanks to Tiffany Hatton. So, guys, we all got a little bite to eat as well. <laughs> There's no fashion event quite like this one, with celebrity guests on parade up this pink carpet with the hottest ticket in town. <laughs> is definitely not easy, especially when you're making a statement like Lady Gaga. <laughs> Do blondes have more fun? Kylie told me two or three hours ago I needed to go as a blonde. Wow. Sexy girl, almost like in a men's shirt, tied up, getting out of the ocean, dripping, and onto the red carpet and all wet, that, that's our vibe. But you've got a pillow built in here, right? I, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sleeping tonight, honey. I'm going to be wide awake for everything that's going on. I did bring some chicken, just in oh, case. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute, what's in that purse? I brought some Okay, she's hungry, girls gotta eat. Yeah. This is fried chicken from inside Tiffany's purse. Gigi! by my heart and my good thoughts. I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but Katie came out of a UPS truck. It was, her outfit was too big to have in a hotel. You golden goddess, oh, Miss Oscar winner king. There's a chicken wing You know who right gave me there. this? Tiffany Haddish gave me this chicken. Of course chicken. she did. <laughs> of course that it's was It's still Tiffany. good if you but, want to bite. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> You've been here before in a heist in a movie. I have been here before. Lots of stealing jokes going on. What are you most inspired by tonight? I'm representing uh, the life-size version of the Met Barbie that they're unveiling today. That it looks exactly like what I'm wearing. Very patriotic. Tell me about the camp theme for you as a designer. Well, I'm channeling Elton John from 1971. <laughs> And D was Liberace inspired. I can't tell if you have more diamonds or feathers. Yes, diamonds and feathers. That what could go wrong? Right? Nothing, nothing. I know you get a little hungry in there, right? I mean, there's no food, really. No, no I don't care. No, there's no food. Do you know who you need to hit up for food? Who's got food? Tiffany Haddish. Fried chicken in her purse. Still good. I'm eating this. Go ahead, go Tiffany, for it. Tiffany, I'm eating it. <laughs> Tiffany, thank you. You saved me. <laughs> 
was the most I had to eat last night. <laughs> Tiffany, thank you for Some me too. Some people have a mic on the red carpet. You have a drumstick. <laughs> I love it now. I love it. Let's Keep bring going. in today's style contributor and E! News correspondent, Zana Roberts Ross, who is also there. Zana, good morning. Good Natalie morning. says the chicken was delicious. It, it was looked delicious. Still warm and crispy. Can oh. I confess, I think this is amazing. I love looking at that. I have no idea what camp. What is that? <laughs> there was, the theme was camp. Camp. So what does that even mean? So it's craziness. definitely not pitching tents and roasting marshmallows. Yes. Camp is all about extravagance. It's all about being ironic. It's all about humor. Yeah. And everybody really went for it. So it was so yeah. nice to see them really go for the theatrics. I mean, starting off with Lady Gaga. I mean, she was co-chair of the night. So she makes the grand entrance. And even Anna Wintour had to stop <laughs> at the top of the stairs to watch the whole performance. I mean, they started the carpet 15 minutes early for this very performance. Why have one dress when you can have four? And she had a whole glam squad <laughs> on the carpet. She went from the pink, the parachute yeah. dress, to the little black one, then to a very sexy pink number. The giant foam was the campus moment ever. Yes. And then the big reveal was, well, not I mean, so big a reveal. It's the, <laughs> the very <laughs> outfit for the rest of the night. I'm so confused. Makes it easy to go to the bathroom, it though, right? It does. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the Jenner sisters. A lot of people uh, think they just knocked it amazing. out of the park. They went for it, and they went for it more than they usually do, actually. They channeled Cher and Raquel Welsh, um, and it was by Versace. The orange plume of feathers was amazing. It was super vibrant for them. Um, and both of them, I, I love the fact they went together and they really did their homework yeah. and yes. found a reference and went for it. I think one of the big themes was bigger is better and we saw that with Cardi B and that duvet cover that she wore. In case, case she got tired, it was all good. She had like 10 people helping her up she the did, stairs. She wow. people, she came in Tom Brown. There was eight people helping her. This was um, a, actually, a, yes, a down-filled duvet. Um, she had the uh, Swarovski um, Stephen Jones headpiece. How did they sit and eat dinner in these outfits? So basically, the, last night, they had to really reimagine the inside part of the Met. They had to build yeah. new changing rooms for all these celebrities who were going out there. Like, oh. They had to build new structures inside. Speaking of, how, where do you put a giant cheeseburger? Which was Katy Perry's oh outfit. Gosh, this was amazing. <laughs> so she, the after parties last night, yes. which I may have attended, she came as a giant cheeseburger. So wait, she went from a candelabra like, oh, as a chandelier. The candelabra. I don't want to miss that because that she was, was the beautiful. chandelier that was powered up. Okay, there we go. So. She was she was lit, as she said. She was retiring that word. This is a Swarovski gown. She came with Jeremy Scott of Moschino. She actually got ready on a moving bus because obviously she didn't yes. step out the hotel wearing this. Um, and she just shimmered. I mean, what, what? there is no ball without a chandelier, yeah. right? She said it weighed about 40 pounds, which I can't imagine walking around in doing high that. heels, no. too. High heels. Okay, Zendaya. Zendaya, this was a magical moment. So she came with her long-term stylist, Laura Roach, and this was a Disney princess moment. Wow. She came as Cinderella. The dress had um, batteries, wires, light packs, the whole wow. thing lit up. And this is actually okay. Laura Roach, her stylist, so beautiful. Well, they're telling me I'm out of time and we have so many more to look at. But can yeah. you just talk about Jared Leto for one second? Oh, creepy. The head. Now, what the is, head. Why was he carrying his head around? So this is that is a camp? This is very camp. A severed head. This took six months in the Weird. making. They did this in the Gucci runway show. <laughs> I, I mean, this head was probably in many different celebrities' hands last night. It was disgusting. Well, what if there was like two <laughs> hairstylists? You know, one for each year. head. Natalie's it's very head. lifelike. All right, we talked about all the fabulous fashion at the Met Gala, but no look is complete without a flawless face. Girl, you got that right. <laughs> and we are lucky enough to be joined by the famed makeup artist who worked on two of last night's <laughs> leading ladies, Mr. Sir John. He's also ladies. a makeup artist behind some of Beyonce's most iconic looks. He was recently named Chief Creative Officer of Citizen Cosmetic. He's cosmetics. He's very fancy. You did Molly <laughs> Sims last night? Molly Sims and Mae Musk Okay, last night, yes. talk about Molly's yeah. look. How did you get busy on it that? It was all about... Honestly, pink, so her dress was beautiful. So it was all about pink and making sure there was monochromatic makeup, which, so the pink eyes, they match the lips. We have Gentrix lips. here. We have yeah, Gentrix, she, who's my beautiful she, model. Okay, and so, so what, what I'm did using, you do here? I'm just using like close your eyes for me, Gentrix, like a pink shadow stick. And honestly, it's stick. one of those things that it, it doesn't matter if you're from Harlem or Hong Kong, pink is something that complements everyone's complexion. So mm. don't be afraid to use that also as a blush as well. And guess what? This is a really, really natural lip that we're doing. We're doing a brown lip and we're doing a little bit 
bit of gloss I'm on fix top. Your mic. Just one second. Sorry, yeah, sure. I just here. I just put it right no here. No problem. And then okay. we're gonna do a little gloss on top. Uh huh. Blot for me. And that brings a little disco into the daytime. Oh, disco into the daytime. Yeah. And then I think Gentrix is because she works on the nine o'clock hour. I feel like she's gonna quit now and go bottle. So <laughs> no. Gentrix, please don't leave us. Uh, she's she's an agent calling her. <laughs> I know. She's very busy. And so right. guys, we over here. Well, we let's have talk. Alex. Let's first before we get to her. Let's yeah. talk about. Let's talk about May Musk. Yes, so so you you did her makeup. Tell us about last night and what that was like so, and what, what were you trying to do with May? So what I love about May's look is I love the fact that she's super classic, classic and timeless, but I, but also we can still use color. Colors is something that never needs to leave us. So a little bit of a punctuation of color or pop of color is something that we all can do. So what I'm going to do now, I'm on taking Alexandra. on Alexandra, mm -hmm. I'm taking a cobalt blue eyeliner, close your eyes. Wait, screen. cobalt blue? Yeah, and it brings You are wild. And what you can do is, all you have to do is give yourself a little strip of cobalt Ooh. and yeah. it's something that's universally flattering on all complexions. Oh, okay. Like okay, and so see how that gives a, such a change to Oh my gosh, oh. and but plus she has blue eyes, eyes too. Yeah, but it's a small, small intellectual change that doesn't take a lot of work. Wow. And it doesn't matter if you're a minimalist or if you like a lot of color, it's something that we can all do. Very little, wow. I should have done some cobalt with this outfit. I, by the way, that would look, wouldn't that look good on right, Yvonne too? And, and you, know, and, you know what, get over here. I don't want to make your makeup better smack. <laughs> <laughs> but the cool thing is it lo really looks good on all complexions and take a look at this guys don't be afraid to make sure that your lips are nude and a nude is a lip enhancing neutral it doesn't necessarily have to take away your lips like we thought about nudes yeah. in the 90s yeah but it's just a more modern take on enhancing so do you think you nude have. is the way to go when I think about nudes I think about what enhances a lip shape so yeah. any color that enhances a lip yeah. shape you technically kind of little, is did, quantified did. as a nude yeah, yeah, a little pop. nude with a pop, right. nude with a pop. now let's talk about Ciara so Ciara so, had she's got yes. a, she's got a beautiful look and Dahlia's going to show us in a second but yes. let's look at what what Ciara's look was what are you trying to Beautiful replicate. chrome, it was chromatic, and the thing I love is like gilded. So the, the theme last night was gilded. When yes. I think about gilded, I think about light reflection. Close your eyes for me. And so when I think about light reflection, that means that you don't necessarily have to foil your eyelids, but we're going to position this liner just above the black line, and it's going to give a beautiful light reflection that opens up the space. Oh. So take a look at that. Let's see. see how that opens up the space of the eye? Oh. That by the way, little piece. She's just, I'm but she's just, she's just gorgeous. I it's mean, everybody like, who, who are you people? Uh-huh. Uh, and wow. so this little pop of chrome is all you need to really just enhance the look. And um, it's all about making sure it's wearable. So yeah. even though last night was the Met Ball, how can I wear this in the daytime? In you want a date for tonight? Because <laughs> yeah. you, you will now. I think okay. she's going to have to. Wait, what kind of moisturizer do you use for real? Uh, for real? Yeah. Neutrogena. Neutrogena. <laughs> okay. I love it. Good. So, but you see this foiling? Close your eyes. It's really good. Looks great. Yeah. Sir John, brilliant. Uh, you can check out Sir John. He's got a master class, a makeup master class. He's one of the site's newest instructors. And to get a master yeah. class is a big it's deal. It's a huge deal. So, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Wow, what an icon and what an incredible night. Until next time.
with over 750,000 subscribers, Stephanie and Cloud Ramos are online hits, whether they're cooking up recipes in the kitchen or on the road reviewing the best food in Texas. Fans cannot wait to see what the Ramos sisters are up to. That's right, and we can't wait to get a look at the festive dish they're cooking up for us this morning. Stephanie and Cloud, good morning to you. Happy Cinco de Mayo. And what are you cooking up for us today? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today we're going to be cooking some uh, skirt steak tacos oh, for you, and we're going to get started with a big, big bowl. You're going to need one so we can get some good marinade going. Oh. You're going to need some lemon juice, yeah, oil, mm. keep it nice and moist in there, soy sauce, and we have plenty of spices that are going to satisfy just about everybody. Mm. We have some ground cumin, paprika. Oh, we left some paprika behind. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you get it all in the bowl. The paprika left behind. <laughs> That's the marinade some for chili the chili powder. Okay. This is our marinade, Got yes. Okay. We're going to add some black pepper. For those of you that like sugar, you're going to love this. Okay. <laughs> and some ground ginger. We're also going to be using some uh, chicken bouillon, but you can use whatever you're comfortable mm. for a soup base. Something like that will always work. Mix that around. Oh, that cumin did make the difference in this. You it can smells smell. Like it's a grill. You're grilling outside. I like and that. And that's where the, fa the flavor is going to pull through, whether you're grilling outside or in your home. This mm -hmm. is just going to be magic. And how long so go you ahead and take that? You're going to be excited about this. Okay. You can do one hour or overnight for best flavor. Oh. So either way, the flavor pulls through with these seasonings. Can I tell you all I've done it for 30 minutes and it works just fine? <laughs> okay. Speaking our language. It's I, I love it. It's true. I love that you're using skirt steak. It's one of my favorites. But my question is, do you cut all the fat off the skirt steak or do you leave it on? You know, I'm very lucky where I purchase my skirt steak. They tend to cut most of the fat off and just leave a little bit to give that flavor that you need to keep it nice and juicy. So make sure you mm. trim some of that off. That's a good question. During winter, keep the fat. You know, we need the extra pounds. <laughs> we do. Uh, I tend to leave During it on. Sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So go ahead and coat your skirt steak. And Cloud, do you want to take over that lovely grill you have there? I got it. All right, All Seth. Right. I'm going to heat up some if you want to. All right. Well, let's go ahead. Let's turn it over. <laughs> so let's practice our virtual wedding dances, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, you hear that sizzle? Yes. Wow. Engage in your it's food, nice smell that aroma, and if it's a little too spicy, go ahead and uh, give it a little toss. But this is very mild, how long very you, mild, full of flavor. How long are you going to cook that steak? It's going to depend on what you like, but today what we're going to do, we're going to cook it for about uh, three to four minutes on each side, okay. but only flip it one time to keep the nice, juicy tenderness, okay? Mm. So while this continues to cook over here, we have something really specially plated for you guys so you can see their tacos oh, right here. Okay. We have it grilled for you. Mm, let's see. Like, Are you doing flour? I hear the mm. mm. Oh my gosh, what an excellent question. <laughs> Our group is from oh, the state of Samora, so we generally do flour, but today we are so lucky. <laughs> can't see. Carson, Carson can't see. Carson's waiting for you right here. I can't uh, see. Wait, but, oh, wait, hold on. Go ahead, though, Cloud. You said, so you're going to go uh, normally flour, but corn on this? We're going to do corn on this because we got our hands on some freshly made tortillas this morning. Mm. They were delivered mm. yesterday. Mm. And so how many toppings do you normally eat, Carson, for the homemade tortillas for oh, the yesterday? Oh, that is a thing of beauty. Ladies, Stick thank you so mind. much. That's the full so recipe for the Ramos Sisters tacos thank and you, more at today.com slash food. Okay, one way to teach kids about the importance of traditions and culture is through family recipes. And that's exactly what our friend Marcela Valladolid is doing in her debut children's cooking. What is, it, what is it called? Tell me what your what it's called. Cocinando on Cookster. I love it. It's a collection of Mi Familia's recipes. Yes. And today she's making one of those recipes in the book. Marcella, we're yes. so happy to have you in person. Yes. So welcome in. Yes. And this is really a book for your daughter. Is that right? It really is. She always used to make me read cook, cook, cookbooks to her at night, but she's not in school yet, which means we only speak Spanish at home with the kids yeah. until they go to school. So mm -hmm. I would be translating in real time, and I was like, I need to write a book for her that it's written in English Brilliant. and Spanish. Oh my God, so you're incredible. Here okay. we are. So, so we're starting with some flautas. flautas. Yes, it's Hispanic Heritage Month, which is kind of weird for me because I celebrate Hispanic yeah. heritage like every day of yeah. my life. Yeah. I, yes. But thank you for the invitation. <laughs> <laughs> well, also thank you for coming to cook. This no, is absolutely. So flautas. And this book is about all those little tips, right? So flautas are rolled up taquitos. And people usually don't know like the simple tips. Like if you warm up a tortilla, it's much easier for you oh. to roll it up oh. without it breaking. So you can yeah.
Yeah, that makes sense, right? Is it's that, just so easy. And, and that's then, just shredded chicken? It's Is that just it? shredded chicken okay. that you can get from the rotisserie chicken okay. from the market if you don't right. want to boil it yourself. Right. Like, make your life easy. And okay. you don't need to put anything on it to make it stick. You just kind of... You don't. And, and you the trick the... with flautas is if you're not an experienced flauta maker, like, the women in Mexico, they don't need to do the toothpick thing. They figure it out. God knows how they make it stick, but it's right. thick. But if you're not a professional flauta maker, so you use the toothpicks. And, and you can fry the toothpicks? Oh, absolutely. You just have to make sure... In? Yeah, that's really hot oil. But there you go. And you just leave those in there for a couple of minutes, and maybe we'll take them out so we don't burn your studio. Okay, I have a crazy question. Yeah. Can you air fry flautas? Absolutely, 100%. So my idea would be you brush it with a little bit of oil, throw it in the air fryer, and that's it. Wait, I am going to try to air fry, fry a flauta you, tonight. You, you can. Know if it works. You can. I'll tell you what you can do. You can bake or air fry tortilla chips, too, but we'll get there in a second. Okay. You're going right. to love it. So okay. now we make the rest. So another thing about the book is introducing folks and kids to, like, the traditional stuff, but not too spicy. Mm -hmm. A pico de gallo salsa or salsa mm -hmm. bandera because it has the colors of the flag. You've got some tomatoes that are seeded, some onion, mm -hmm. cilantro for sure, mm -hmm. jalapeño, and you can mm. measure like... But do you do the jalapenos without seeds? You do it without the seed. The spice is actually in the vein, oh. not so much oh. the seed. Oh. Yeah, so you take out the vein. And if you don't like spice, just do a little sprinkle of jalapeno. My mom's trick, oil in the salsa. Oil and, and, yeah. and lemon. And lemon, and, and a little pepper. salt and pepper, and that's it. And you've got your beautiful salsa. That's okay. beautiful. Yeah, and then oh, to dress them up, Yum. another great one for my mom, always dress the lettuce. A little oil, a little vinegar, brings mm. out all of the flavor, mm. and then you just dress it, and then go Mexican with like a big, yeah. huge, you know. And salad on top almost. The whole thing, and okay. you've got some beautiful Let's ones try, here. here. Here's some flautas. I'll dress these And what do you add on top? Caeta cheese? Yeah, so dress lettuce, like that's one of the things I teach in my cooking mm. class. Always dress the lettuce in these Mexican antojitos. A little mm. cotija mm. cheese and Mexican crema, because why not? Because mm. it's so delicious. Mm. Come on over, bring your Wait, flautas, ladies. It's so mm. crunchy and yummy. Okay, and you were having like a, like a heart attack because we baked the chips, which I, I love. I brilliant idea. Yeah, absolutely. So here's the thing. Tortilla chips are awesome, but if you bake them, you might be like a little more willing to put them on the dinner oh, table, it's right? It's good, like good for your kids. And here's what's great about this recipe. Like you brush them with oil and Mask, you bake them. What is this? It's a um, corn tortilla. You has to be corn. You take a and cut it up. Okay. Yeah, you cut it up. You can cut it up into stars. You can use okay. cookie cutters. You can okay. have so much fun like, with that's this. that's so cute. So much fun. I do it for Christmas. Christmas and do Christmas shapes and make like a tortilla chip Christmas. Tree. Of but anyway, that's do. a different. I love you. That's what, a different. Segment. What is that spice you're putting on? Anything you want. I'm using chili lime powder, a little bit of thyme, a little bit of rosemary. Mm. That's the thing about mm. homemade chips. You can season them with whatever you want. And so how, simple. So they're brushed with oil, seasoned, and then you put them in the oven. 350, 15, 20 minutes that's until it? they're nice and crisp. You want to okay. make sure they're dried out. Nobody likes soggy tortilla chips. Now you're gonna make us a little guac. Simplest thing in the world. All of these recipes come from my mom, which is what's so special about the book. The secret ingredient what? to guac. Pause is distilled white vinegar. What? That's why you guys were eating it and you were like, oh my Wait, God. What? It I've brings, never heard that. It's it's how my mom used to make it when I was a kid. So and li and li is that lime? lime? And yeah, and then you just mash it in salt. Lime and that's, vinegar. that's all you need for a good what about guacamole. What about cilantro, no? You can. But, but I'm a purist when it comes to guacamole. And you don't put tomatoes, I'm which is interesting. You can. This, you certainly this. can. You you can find like Pomegranate seeds, mango, yeah. anything around yeah. across it's, Mexico. Like way. people are getting adventurous. But for me, guacamole is just this with some baked chips that are seasoned, and that's it. This mm. is amazing. So good, right? We love these. Mm. Thank you. We're gonna try. Mm. So Mm -hmm. If you want these recipes, all you have to do is go to today.com slash food. Mm. And Marcella, everybody check out her book. At, it's her children's cookbook. It's for all of our kids at today.com slash books. The last time she was on, remember her daughter? The Na Naked Barbie. Naked Barbie. Naked Barbie. Naked Everything we want from that. Hola, Hola, David. Hola, all right. Bye.
Because that's what we see here in New York City. Jenna is back outside. You know what? The gods, they just said, let's let the rain stop. It's time for some Texas food. What do you have, Jenna? There is such good food in Texas. It smells amazing. I'm here with Matt Lowry and Corey Cook, the owners of LJ's Barbecue. It's where all the locals go. I told Wanda, and she was like, what? You get to eat this barbecue? <laughs> Morning, guys. They stood out here in the rain, and they protected the beef. <laughs> yes, ma'am. All right, so we're going to make one of my favorite Texas dishes, which is queso, but you all have a little extra spin on it. Exactly. We, it's Texas, so let's put some brisket on it. Why not? Okay, so show us what we do. What do you put in your queso? We, we got a two-cheese queso. It's white American and pepper jack cheese. Add a little bit of half and half and some cream of chicken mm. just to keep it thick. <laughs> and it takes about an hour and a half for it to all melt down properly. And then we'll chop up some beef right. and throw it on top. Okay. Wow. Can't go wrong with the side brisket, huh? Y'all must know that I like queso because, and with a little brisket on top, delicious. We heard. Okay, you guys have a really famous sandwich at your restaurant. Tell me about it. Yeah, it's the, uh, we call it the big dog. It's just sausage, brisket, loaded up with pickles and onions. All the, uh, the regulars know all, all know to get it. So we'll go ahead and make that real quick. Okay. So your special sauce is mustard you told us that earlier in the show well to, to bind the uh to bind the the rub to the uh brisket yeah we throw mustard on there it's a, a common trick a lot of guys use and it works really well and adds a little bit of flavor too and this is our jalapeno cheese sausage we jalapeno cheese sausage it, it's the best one. Oh my gosh you had me at some pickles and some onions on there Corey. wow we are good to go that is amazing. That's a, that really is a big dog. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, so what is your favorite part of your restaurant? I see some banana pudding, some cobbler, some mac and cheese, collard greens. It, I'm a meat guy, so the meat's my favorite. I'm kind of in charge of that. But uh, everything is delicious. We, we, everything's homemade in our restaurant, except the bread and the tortillas. Uh, everybody asks, is, is everything homemade? Yep, always homemade. Uh, but we just we we're, we like it all so we try to put our best in everything we make mm -hmm. well i'm gonna try I, i'm gonna try the big dog right here but i'm kind of scared about what this is going to look like in fact i might have to try it when we go to commercial break if people are having breakfast yeah. they might be overwhelmed well we're going to get a tray cut for you and then that way you know you can get a little sample of everything that we but have out here for you today. i have to say i've already tried it this mac and cheese hoda yeah give it how is it mm. Is Never it, had anything like that. Oh my God, I want that. So, Never had anything like that. Can you cook that stuff if you don't have a smoker? What are you supposed to do if you don't have a smoker? Yeah, so so what do you guys, Hoda wants to know when you don't have a smoker, how do you cook these meats? Uh, your you best, don't. <laughs> yeah, it's tough, it's tough, but your best bet, like maybe you try to try to try a charcoal grill might work. Yeah, you, you, you can, can try and kind of get it, a deflector plate and some of the Weber kettle grills and stuff. Mm. You know, we use an offset smoker, which mm -hmm. is just nothing but smoke. There's no direct heat ever going on the meat. Mm. And yeah. so, you know, the briskets that we have here today, they smoked for about 12 hours. And They're delicious. And by the way, this banana pudding, really good. Hold on, I'm bringing you back some food. Shout send out to back, send it back. Banana pudding. We love you. Oh, this is your mom's that recipe. Awesome. Yes. I love you. We'll be back show, right after this. Good.
Joining us this morning, Jocelyn Delk Adams, founder of Grand Baby Cakes, also the author of Everyday Grand, which, oh, by the way, is available for pre-order as we speak. Sure is. And just, yeah. Jocelyn is here to share her spin on a classic and easy weeknight dish, the casserole. And to cook along with us, all you have to do is scan that QR code to order the ingredients with just one click, you select add ingredients to cart, and then you schedule a pickup or delivery. It's that easy, almost as easy as making the dish itself. Yep. Welcome back. And you're going to help me. I am going I am <laughs> going to help this morning. So tortilla chip casserole could not be easier. Tortilla you can get the kids involved. Casserole. You can even do this, okay? Because I know you can be, <laughs> I know you can be cooking challenge. So we're going to get True. this together. So to start, I'm going to show you how we're going to dice up these like bell peppers, okay. right? You're going to get these strips, just kind of get them together really easily and then just go down to create like these small little dices okay. right really easy just gather all up and that's all you even I do. can do that Josh. yeah you can do that you can do that yeah. see you're okay. winning already mm -hmm. so we're gonna start on our meat mixture I've got some ground beef here gonna add this to some olive oil you hear that nice sizzle and I assume you could easily swap that out with turkey or yep, you can even, turkey, ground chicken. even ground chicken <laughs> okay. yep whatever you got is fine and then I'm gonna add in our bell pepper here mm -hmm. and then can you add in that diced onion yes, and some garlic yes, for me so that's it. That's pretty that's simple it. so far. So yeah, you got to start cooking this down. You're going to brown it. How much garlic is that? Uh, I mean, hey, is I it? love garlic. Okay. All right, add it in, all right? Oh, yes, add as much as you want in there. And then this is when we get into the flavors. Like, we're going to add in two salsas. So if you have Taco have Tuesday that. tonight, of course, you yes. might have some leftover salsas. Mm -hmm. Add in the red and the green. That's going to give us ample flavor like here. chunky one, Josh? Yeah, yeah. Like you can grab the chunky yeah, for that chunky. texture. Yeah. You take so your salsa good. seriously. Out there. I do. You can't play around with salsa, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We're gonna add in this salsa, and then we're gonna add in some really taco seasoning. So just store bought taco store seasoning. Store bought. Wow. Get it in the little Let's packet see. and just toss it all together mm -hmm. with some chicken stock. Chicken stock. What's oh, the word, Al? It's very good. Mm -hmm. it's really so good. yummy, Crunchy. right? So yummy. Oh my gosh! So you're gonna cook this together. This is our swap. So Hello, the magic of TV. Okay. Yep, looks really good. You're gonna let that kind of thicken up into this, and then we're gonna start adding in our additional texture. We've got is that cream of mushroom? It is. Oh, I love that. I know. It it's makes it so creamy. For you can throw it into that. everything. We can throw it into soup? everything at my home. Yeah. Everything. Oh, mushroom, mushroom soup? soup? Oh, yeah. Just oh, yeah. throw it into everything. Wow. It makes everything so much better. Why do you like it so much? What the, so um. It's so creamy. It adds mm. so much richness along with like the sour cream mm. in this. It mm. really Umami. makes that texture so great. Yeah. And I love anything with mushroom, too. We're going to add in some black beans, okay. too. Grab that, add that in, and of course the sour cream I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Throw that in too for that extra richness and that tang. Ooh, and then we're gonna like add in some cheese. cheese. Yep, get that in there. Right. And we're gonna stir that together. Oh, cool. Oh, there's and then this is when you get the kids involved, or mm -hmm. you can get rid of like your morning aggression. I'm gonna have you like, <laughs> you know, just go for oh, it. And yeah, then, you know, you oh, get that get out. The kids. Get the, I know. He's like, I'm taking that over. Yeah. Right. You're gonna crunch oh, that so this together. Is cool. This goes in the pan. Goes in. And you then can, you build it. Yeah. Yeah, and then you just start building it. And this is where we get into our casserole. It's almost like a lasagna. You're going to just layer it up. Oh. Mm. The oh, bottom that's... layer is Doritos or whatever yeah. your corn chip is? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. you, can you can do the Frito. cheesy ones. Fritos. Mm. Fritos. Frito. Frito. Like Frito. whatever Flaming your faves hot. are. Yeah. The flaming Hot. Mm. You know, get oh, some like spice that. in there. Like whatever you love. Like you can really adapt this and make this into whatever this is really you like. Good. It's almost yeah. like a layered dip. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it is. Really and like you bake it off and you get all those textures. You get the crunch. Oh, it's so that How long do you bake it? About 30 minutes. Okay. And then you're going to add some cheese on top. Don't add the cheese at the beginning and put the foil over it because it'll, it'll stick, stick to, to the foil. foil. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. So do it. Take the foil this. off this and then great. just add the cheese and then let it get off. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it comes it's out. So I'm going to taste it. Yeah, Tell oh us about this new cookbook. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. It's called Everyday Grand yeah. and it's all about just mm -hmm. loving and enjoying every single moment of life. So like great. I wanted to just make a book that just made everyone happy, mm -hmm. right? Finding so much joy and just beyond just holidays, like you got a good hair yeah. day, celebrate. celebrate. Yeah. Got the book is hey, terrific. Ooh, that's good. Think and Al endorsed it. I was so grateful to awesome. him. I mean, like, hey, you changed the tire, celebrate. That's good. Your four year old's gonna love this. <laughs> yeah, she loves it. It's, it's so good. <laughs> thank, thank you. Jocelyn, thank you again.
there are a few things that bring life so much joy as tacos and margaritas, <laughs> mm -hmm. or in my case, a mocktail. So here are some <laughs> great ideas for celebrating Cinco de Mayo this weekend. Author of the new cookbook called Fiestas, Marcela Valladolid. Ooh, I know, I had a little accent. <laughs> so beautiful with my name, thank, thank you. Thank you, Marcela, thank you. so thank you. no pressure. We're gonna cook with my mom and her only recipe is tacos. Listen, I didn't know I was going to cook with the first lady today. I'm a little bit nervous. If I mess something up, I didn't know this was happening, so I'm sorry. I apologize in advance. I apologize so in you advance. Are, you're from Mexico. I am. And where no one ever celebrated Cinco de Mayo. Well, of course. It's a kind but of an Americanized okay. holiday, right? 100 percent. It's like I'm on a tour uh, breaking, telling people that we don't we've never celebrate it in Mexico, but we, but we love that you love Mexico. In Texas, we really we celebrate We do celebrate it. So what are we making? Let's start with the, this is a vegetarian and taco, right? It is. I love to do a ton of vegetarian right. food, and, and my kids love it as well. And this is a kid favorite, so anything that the kids get excited about, I get excited about. Okay, so this cool. is basically we're making a, a vessel, a tortilla out of zucchini. So you're just going to take that cheese, cheese and throw it in there. Mom, you want to put And this the is eggs shredded in? zucchini. Sure. Super important that you wring it out. You have to get rid of all the moisture, otherwise it's just super soggy and it won't turn into tortilla. Ready for the eggs? Yes, eggs, and that's what's going to bind it together. And just some seasonings: garlic powder, salt and pepper. You can add chipotle powder, um, a little bit of oregano, whatever. Whatever spices you favor, you can add that. And the so kids go that. for the the kids go for the tortilla made out of zucchini. Totally, I think adding the seasonings and make it making it nice and savory. And if you add cheese in the filling or mushrooms and anything that they like, chicken, shredded chicken, they love that. So if the kids go for it, what about Meredith Vieira? Can I, I, like it? It? Well, I don't know. We're gonna have to ask her. If you don't like it, just please pretend that you do. <laughs> of course. Thank you. So you take a scoop of this, super easy, and then you're just gonna gently pat it out. We have one here. Maybe you could use a little bit more. You can make it mini for the kids. They would love that too. Yeah. So you just pat it out, you bake it 350 for about 20 minutes, and you're set. Mm, so this is all like a meatless a Monday. Paper. Totally. It's yeah, absolutely great. meatless Monday. And you can add shredded chicken if there's somebody in the family that's like, I need some meat. Even okay. though it's a Friday. Yes. Right. <laughs> so you've got sweet potatoes, garlic, a little bit of chili powder. I favor chipotle. If you don't have any uh, powders, just take a spice grinder and throw a dried chili in there, and it's a great solution for mm. um, getting dried yeah, chili. Yeah, sweet potatoes too have like that kind of meaty texture. They do. Right. They're very, they, they're very filling, right? So it's a great part of your dinner. So all we've got all the accoutrements here for the traditional taco. I love that. Um, I yeah, I have to take this over is here. Bush is cooking <laughs> my food, and I'm very excited. I'm sorry. No, we okay. like that you're excited. I'm very excited. And by the way, my mom likes vegetarian food, so it feels wow. like I, yeah, think, I think you love this if you if you if you choose it to make it. It feels like you picked the honest. perfect recipe for her. Okay, so then you take those sweet potatoes, and we mix those with a little bit of kale. We just add those here. We know how that wilts. It looks like a lot, but it's going to end up getting wilted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Season the taste with salt and pepper. Add more of the chili if you like. You know what I love too is it's a taco bar, which yes. is so fun for kids. Yes. Mm -hmm. To make their tacos perfect. Okay. That guy there. You know what? Let's, All the seasonings. Let's are we walking? Are we, we're gonna are we walk, tasting? but we also want to taste. Okay. okay. Do you like it? Yeah, it's spicy. Mom, do you want some? Sure. Thanks. Okay. Wow, doesn't it doesn't look, look good? Delish. Okay, we'll have a little bite. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> good. Very good. good. Wonderful. Wonderful. Mm. She's gonna like it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wrap it up for our lunch. Uh oh. That, don't zoom in on that. Let's go back to your mom for a mocktail. <laughs> okay, I will hold your plate. I will hold your thank plate. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. we'll Isn't that good? Here. Very good. Here, we'll put that over here. Okay, thank okay, you. So, really mocktail. Yes, uh, dragon fruit, a pitaya. I grew up with a pitaya, agua fresca in my fridge every day of my life. Super simple. And you can always cut these open, and you don't know if you're going to get white or this beautiful fuchsia color. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like you hope you get this color because it makes a beautiful drink. Yeah. Pitaya or the dragon fruit. A little bit of soda. You want to add that at the end, though. A little bit of fresh lemon or lime juice. Either one will work. Mm -hmm. Plenty of sugar. About a cup, a cup and a wow. half. Wow. Mm. And those are virgins. But this will be great with either tequila or vodka, or right? Vodka or a light rum would be great. So you just blend this up. Okay. Mm, delicious. Marcella, you yes. did it again. Thank this you. Beautiful. Delish. Thank you. Thank you so much, and you were excellent. Thank you. So to make these recipes at home, check out today.com/food, and to get Marcella's book, go to today.com/shop.
National Margarita Day. Yes, it is. It's one of my favorite days of the year, although I'm too bad it lands on a Tuesday after a long well, weekend. Well, there's a new recipe going viral that let's give it a try. Okay, so we're going to try it. Okay, so in the blender. Yeah, what do you do? What's that? In the blender. That's the blender. I know, but something's in there. Um, you put one half cup it's sugar. That's a lot there. of What's sugar, y'all. No, thank you. Uh, something's in there already. Okay, just sugar water. Okay, tequila. You had tequila. Wait. Maybe it's already in there. That's the sugar water. Oh, sugar water. Sorry. But I don't think y'all should put sugar. I think you should put agave. But anyway, okay. this is not my recipe. One cup of tequila. Okay. Wow. To your tasting. You put a little contro. Okay. Two cups of what? Oh, we haven't done the Two sugar yet. Two cups of cold ice sugar. water. Put it in, yeah. That's a lot Two of sugar. No, it's not. Yeah, it Wait. is. No, that's for the drinks. Okay. That seems good. And then put in the limes. Oh. Oh. You Two. toss all of it? Do you Quarter, squeeze you peels it? Peels on. Peels, peels on. on. Put it in. Put it in. Put it in. Dump, dump. Good. Ew. Is that it? Oh, salt. Salt. No, no, no. The salt's for the rim. Is the salt for the rim? Oh, a pinch of salt. Just a pinch. You know what? You are very <laughs> controlling. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> just a pinch. Okay, just a pinch. Okay. This is gonna be great. I don't turn know. It on. Wait, should we put the ice? No, no, it's not no. Wait, do you hit green smoothie? Hit green smoothie. Why? Because. Wait, what? With the peels on? Okay, is that enough? I think so. That's good. You gotta turn it off. <laughs> I was just working your control. <laughs> It was hard. You're like, you ready? Stop it. Turn Stop it. it. Okay, now we Wait. strain it. We pour it over the strainer. Oh, sorry. Is, there, is your finger stuck? Yeah, it was. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Pour Hold it on. over the strainer. This is the best recipe we've ever made. Wait, don't you want the foam? I think you're just getting oh, the peels out. The peel peels out. out. Is someone telling you in your ear? No. Why do you keep pausing? Because I'm not understanding <laughs> this. I'm not good at recipes. Here, do you want to try it? Uh, I, I, there's something very soothing about watching it strain. Isn't there? Yeah. All right. I want to drink the one I made. I don't want to drink that one. You know what I think this would be good for you? What? Is your mojito recipe. <gasps> yes! I think it would be great for your mojito okay. recipe. Oops. Wow. Okay. okay. Well, I'm gonna, I want to drink this one because I remade it. Let's see how it tastes. Wow. Is it strong? It's too sweet for me. Oh, I love sweet. You're going to be into it then. It's also a little strong. No, try this one. Here, use a straw. <laughs> oh, that's much that's better. Good. What? What's the difference? Taste this one. Here, okay. you taste this one. <laughs> <laughs> They're all good. Maybe they no, just added extra that, liquor for us. Taste I'm sure. that one. Yeah. I'm right, right? Okay. Actually, really. <laughs> this, looks really fun. this is a great day. Welcome to The Boost, and we are going to start your day off right with stories to boost your mood. We're going to leave you with a smile. Did you know that May is National Get Caught Reading Month? So our first story takes us all the way to Tucson, Arizona, where books are hidden all over the city, encouraging the community to read. It all started with three women who wanted to bring the joy of books to grown-ups. Jenna Bush Hager has the story you'll only see here on Today All Day. So we'll start on the east side? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Meet Emily, Jody, and Mary Ellen, the three women behind the Tucson to Home Gnome. We wanted to share books in order to help spread literacy and kindness. An idea that came to Emily during the pandemic. I felt like so disconnected from everyone in my life. Books were kind of what helped keep me sane. Um, so I was like, what if we just shared books with people? What if we just did a random act of kindness people could find a book out in their community and maybe realize they're not alone. Emily immediately brought the idea to Jody and Mary Ellen. And it was so funny because you kept being like, is this weird? Yes. Will people find this weird? Is it just me? And we, we were both like, no, if I found a book, it would be amazing. <laughs> and so it began. I think we should put it there. But like every good book, they needed a great name. There's not a lot of great like <laughs> bookish things that rhyme with book. So I was like, tome, tome, tome. My husband's like, gnome. And I was like, I'm here for this. It's the Tome Gnome. It's the Tucson Tome Gnome. Every month, the trio chooses a different book to hide. 
We want it to be very inclusive and we also want to amplify marginalized voices. And so we tend to find books that may not be on everyone's radar, but that we love. To date, we have hidden 730 books. 30 are done scavenger hunt style. We pick a Sunday every month, we go hide the book. The other 15, we split between the three of us and actually hide in essentially parts of town that we call book deserts, where there may not be easy access to a library. It takes them about seven to eight hours to hide the books. We sneak out. Well, we don't really sneak out, but we <laughs> kind of try to look inconspicuous. <laughs> <laughs> and we set the book down and then we post hints throughout the day on Instagram. Once they post it, I just start driving that way and hope that it's still there when I get there. <laughs> Shauna Brown Zapata participates every month. A couple months ago, I drove all over town. I went to like eight different spots. I like the community feel of it. Jessica Hill brings her daughter, Abby. I love to go in the for them with my family. It feels like we're going on an adventure. It makes me feel like a kid again, right? Going on a hunt and getting to find something that someone else has so lovingly put out there. It meets all, the, all of my needs for happiness and joy. And the adventure has captured many new readers, like Cynthia Bardo. I never used to read, and I think the fun of finding the book helped me stay in the book. And I have read seven books since January, so I definitely found my love for reading. You know, there's a lot in this country that we focus on children's literacy and joy, like book joy for older teens and grown-ups kind of just like drops away. And so I think that's something that the three of us really thought was valuable. Like this is a huge gap, like book joy for adults. And they all want the joy to be passed on. We also put on the front a sticker that says, congratulations, you found a, a free tome. If you like it, let it roam, because we want them to rehide it. Emily's small idea impacting the Tucson community, one page at a time. It is truly just meant to be this kindness project and seeing people enjoy finding a book, right? Like, it's a, such a silly thing, because it's like, well, I don't want to go to the library and like get the same book, but there's something in the act of finding a free book that someone put out into the world for that sole purpose and the joy and connection it brings. Coming up next, a bus driver is going above and beyond teaching kids the joys of reading every single day. Take a look. Meet Herman Cruz. Hey, kid. What's up, buddy? He drives a school bus for Middle Township Elementary in New Jersey. Hi, good morning. Cruz is more than just a bus driver. He's also a driving force in students' lives. Bye. Mr. Herman, as the kids call him, spends his spare time in between roots, volunteering as a reading tutor. What's the name of the book? I can fly. Can you? No. You can't? No. So tell me how this all started. It started as a means of killing time until dismissal. I overheard a student interacting with his teacher about a reading assignment mm -hmm. and that he didn't get it done. And I said, you know what? I could help him. He just was exuberant. Hey! It started with one, mm -hmm. and then it just got contagious. Oh my goodness, calm down, calm down. Now, two years later, he meets three days a week with kindergartners, first and second graders, one-on-one -on -one for hours at a time in a corner of the school. They call his reading program Mr. Herman's Kids, and there is a line out the door. Mr. Herman is a legend. When Mr. Herman comes to my class, I smile. I want to be smart like him. He helps me learn new words. He is my best friend ever. A bus driver for more than three decades, now one of the kids' biggest mentors, all through the joy of sharing a book. The same joy he shares with his own family. Cruz has five kids of his own, and he likes to tell them and his students the most unusual way he fell in love with reading. I vividly remember when I was their age, my mother bought a World Book Encyclopedia. And I read every book, A to Z. I was literally a voracious reader. And it just expands your mind. And I just part that gift to the kids. Good job, baby girl. As a father of five myself, I impart my parental skills upon them. I give them the love, the support, the nurturing, 
as, as a father to them. I'm like a big brother, I'm like a dad, I'm like a pop pop, a grandfather. There you go. What has it been like watching a kid fall in love with reading? It's like unlocking a door. I can see the lights on in their eyes. And I think it's because they feel seen by you. I love them. I love the kids. Mr. Herman thinks we're getting his bus ready for dismissal. They, they tell me about their day. They tell me about their assignments. He has no idea that his students are gathered outside to give him a super-sized thank you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Mr. Herman, a man of words, now speechless. Mr. Herman, all of your kids wanted to show you how much they loved you. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Y'all, do we love Mr. Herman? Yeah! We have a little something for Mr. Herman. This is for your reading corner to make it official. Mr. Herman's Kids Corner. So that you have an official place in the school to read. Oh, this is awesome. What's Mr. Herman's Kids Corner without books? We need books, don't we? Yeah! Okay, bring on the books. Mr. Herman, Scholastic has donated a thousand books to this school in your honor. Every kid is going to take home a book. A joyous celebration of love and literature, thanks to a man inspiring the next generation of readers. We are gearing up for the Kentucky Derby this weekend, and while all eyes will be on the crowded field of thoroughbreds, there are some other animals stealing this show, helping those horses get ready for the run for the roses. All in line and ready for the start. They're off in the Kentucky Derby. Among the horses who've gone for glory at the Kentucky Derby. Secretariat beat the Derby record by three-fifths of a second. Some of the greatest of all time. American Pharaoh and Victor Espinosa have won the Kentucky Derby! But it's on the back side of the track here at Churchill Downs where you'll find the real goats. I mean, yeah, literal goats. <laughs> who are doing important work as emotional support animals for their breakneck barn mates. This is just for you guys, especially for you guys. <laughs> Meet Bandit. Normally he's just not wearing this, he just likes to, uh, he says no. Under the care of assistant trainer Carlos Santa Maria, the baby goat brings a sense of peace to Richard Baltus's barn. <laughs> he likes to be always doing something playful. Even striking up a special friendship with a nervous filly named Disappearing Act. You can see the, uh, the difference with the filly. She settles down. Sometimes even in the morning, they're eating together from in the ground from the same hay with the grain. It's really hard to take them apart. Hi, you look like you've had a few Cheetos. <laughs> can I pet them? Bigger goats can act as security too. 
A few doors down, Mr. Man patrols trainer Brad Cox's stable, which houses three horses running for the roses. What's the mentality of a horse leading up to a race? Do they know the race is coming? They're all different. Some of them handle it a little better than others. Most of the time you'll get a filly that's a little nervous race day. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of pressure, especially when you're coached by the defending derby champ. Good thing Chestnut Colt Cyberknife has Mr. Man to calm him down. You rarely see a horse that does not like him. He's basically become our barn mascot. He's probably he gets as much attention as probably the three horses are running <laughs> in the Kentucky Derby. And for good reason. These trainers say their goats are their horse's good luck charms, even if they're not exactly sure what gives them the magic touch. Let's take a look back at the winner of the 2022 Kentucky Derby. Rich Strike's underdog victory shocked the world and helped one family heal. Rich Strike is coming up on the inside. At 80 to one odds, barely anyone gave Rich Strike a shot. Oh my goodness, the longest shot has won the Kentucky Derby. All right, joining us now is one of the guys behind Rich Strike's success, trainer Eric Reed. Hey, Eric, we heard you say that you practically passed out when your horse won. We're wondering how you're feeling this morning. I'm full of life this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet you are, Eric. Congratulations. You guys were very uh, confident after the race. You said we wouldn't put a horse in this race that we didn't think could win the Kentucky Derby. But now with a couple of days distance, yeah. come clean with us. <laughs> the horse before the race, an hour before, was 99 to 1, 80 to 1 at post time. Did you really think Rich Strike could win the Kentucky Derby? We thought he would run really good. Nobody thought we would win, but it, it, we had said earlier in the day, we know the horse and the paper and the numbers and the form. I can see him being 80 to 1. But the, the, the public doesn't know much about us. They gave us no recognition. They didn't watch him train. His workout was the best of anybody that worked for the Derby at Churchill that week. And his last two races, he had finished so fast and ran by everybody in the race. So we knew the extra distance and the longer stretch. And this horse had already won by 18 lengths at that track. So in our minds, we thought if he could find his way through the 17 or 18 horses he had to pass, he could win. And I have some guys that were with me that made sixty, seventy thousand dollars off oh, their bets. So we, we, we had absolutely thought we could win. Wow. Well, that Eric, that, that's pretty amazing. Watching him weave his yeah. way through that field of horses was just magic. Was there a point in the race where you're like, I think we have this because he looked so far behind through most of it? Well. I saw him going into the final turn, start to move into the contention, you know, and I thought, well, this is not a bad spot. And I knew that's where all the traffic jam was going to take place. And that's why I rode Sonny, because Sonny knows his horse, and he knew exactly how the horse wants to run. And I lost him right in the middle of the turn. He got in that big group of horses, and a friend of mine, Ken Tyson, was beside me, and my dad was in front of me. And I said, Kenny, I can't find him. Where is he? And that's about the time it got to the top of the stretch, and he goes, he just dropped to the rail. You're fifth. Wow. And I saw him, and I'm looking, and I said, oh, my God, Dad. I said, we might hit the board. <laughs> and in the middle of the stretch, when he passed Messier, I hear Ken Tyson going, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And about the second time he said it, he put his head in front, and I I grabbed my father. I said, oh, Dad, yeah. we're going to win the Derby. <laughs> and uh, I don't remember hitting the wire because I went down and they jumped uh, on me like I scored the winning <laughs> touchdown of Super Bowl. So. Um, uh, well, you did, basically. Yeah, you really you did. did. And, and what a ride by your jockey, Sonny Leon. You could almost see a moment from that view above where he decided, hey, let's go win the Kentucky mm -hmm. Derby. You mentioned your dad. We've been talking about your own personal journey. You've been a trainer for 40 years. Your dad, Herbert, for 60 years. Mm. You can see all that emotion after the race. And you've been through a lot even recently, Eric. You had the fire at your farm, uh, I think it was about six years ago, where you lost some of those horses you loved and you weren't sure that you'd continue in horse racing to be a trainer. How much more did that moment on Saturday mean because of all you've been through? It meant everything. Um, you know, we have had a rough six years. We had the barn fire, um, which was probably the most horrific, tragic thing I'd seen at that point. Uh, I had two of my best friends, assistant trainers, pass away of cancer a year and a half ago. My grandson was killed in a tragic accident. Um, the only thing that kept us going was these horses and the love and uh, that everybody gave us. And you know, um, man, 
Mm. Richie's America's horse. Is that to keep getting all these texts <laughs> and emails? You know, he's not Richie. He's America's horse. So he's he's brought us out of a, a really dark time. Wow, mm. Richie was was something to watch. What a beautiful ending. There was a moment when the race was was over, Eric, where. They were describing him as feisty. He was kind of nipping at a pony, and people didn't quite know what to make of what was happening. It looked like someone was punching him off. What was going on there? I'm glad you asked, because I want to clear that up. Um, the outrider's job at the end of the race is to help get the leading horse and get him slowed down and take him around, let him do the interviews. Well, Richie, um, he was in killer mode. He was going to outrun every horse on the track, and he had not had a horse after the finish line come over to him. So when he saw that pony coming his way, he thought he had another horse to beat, and he was trying to run by it. Mm. And the man did his job. He reached out and grabbed a hold of the horse, and it made the horse mad. Um, he didn't know that he was trying to help him. He thought he was supposed to outrun that horse, and he bit the guy's leg terribly. Oh, bit his arm a couple of really bad bites. Um, he, the horse is not a mean horse. He just was in the race mode, and he didn't understand why they were grabbing him to slow him down. That man saved my horse from injury because had he got up in the air and lost my rider, he could have got loose. Uh -huh. um, I'm sorry for the injuries he sustained. the boost we've got some food for thought introducing you to a business built on a fresh idea to make healthy food available at the push of the button with a new way to eat healthy on the go how can you change the way that people eat you can't tell them to eat healthier you have to make it easier more convenient more affordable and it has to taste good luke saunders is mixing up the fast food business Believe it or not, about 100 million people are gonna visit a vending machine today to get something to eat or drink. His goal, transforming how people eat with fresh ingredients. Saunders is the founder and CEO of Farmer's Fridge, a 24 seven meal option dispensing healthy food from a vending machine. I've seen these, these Farmer's Fridge kiosks and I thought, wow, that's, that's kind of interesting. You've been in and out of airports. Was that kind of the, the impetus for, for this business? So the idea was to get Farmer's Fridge everywhere um, and to make it as accessible as a candy bar to eat healthy food on the go. The idea coming to him during a work trip a decade ago. I was a traveling salesman. I was driving a thousand miles a week. I was in an airport every other week. And I really just thought, you know, I'm sick of eating processed food or fast food is my only option. So we decided to use the vending machine because it is actually the most convenient format for getting food. With no experience in the food industry, he rented a space and got to work. I started in a shared kitchen. I was making salads, renting a table by the hour, uh, you know, 10 bucks for 
a four by eight table in a shared kitchen in, in the west side of Chicago. Today, you may have seen one of the more than 650 fridges in airports, hospitals, and office buildings across the country. Stock daily with fresh salads, bowls, snacks, and more. Give me a sense of the logistics. That what does it take to get, you know, these jars and, and your bowls and things like that in fresh every day into all those refrigerators? So our entire manufacturing operation is set up around this idea that you actually have to cut into the vegetables that morning to keep them as fresh as possible, get them right into the jar, and then get it to customers as fast as you can. And we're getting that food from our kitchen into those fridges in as little as four or five hours sometimes. What happens to the food that you don't sell? The idea has always been to donate unsold food. We actually partnered with Feeding America to donate a million and a half meals in 2023. And we're also, so far in 10 years, have donated about 400,000 meals to our network of fridges. The company's not only giving back to the community, but is also focusing on keeping their jars out of landfills. And these jars are, are eco-friendly? Uh, they are. They're, so we use 50% recycled PET, and then all of our fridges actually have a jar return. And picking up some famous fans along the way. Arianna Huffington visited one of your your fridges in JFK and actually posted about it on Instagram. Was that kind of a moment of uh, of like vindication? You know, it's funny. I think anytime we get a, a celebrity posting about Farmer's Fridge, it, it is a very special moment. Even with their popularity and impressive growth, Farmer's Fridge is just getting started. So if you go through an airport, like you mentioned, you'll see us in the retail store and the fridges. You can get us really anywhere you want. Until that's true for everybody across the whole United States, we're not done. Food has the power to bring people together, and a young couple is doing just that for college students, building a community through the power of a good meal. We just basically said, as long as we have the means that we can afford this, like, I'll, I'll cook. And He'll cook, not me, I don't cook. <laughs> Food has always played a special part in Tom and Rachel Sullivan's love story. This is purple chicken noodle soup. <laughs> but Tom's passion for creating healthy and delicious meals began two years ago when they started trying for a baby. So I was diagnosed with PCOS, which is polycystic ovary syndrome. And at that time, kind of the only recommendation I was given was to go on birth control. And we found some evidence out there that it might be able to manage it through food and Nutrition, and this is scary, but let's let's try it with food. Tom started collecting all types of recipes and kept a secret record of them online. It was just a place <laughs> that I could literally have a picture, a description. Like, I didn't want anyone to know about it. When I got word of it, I made a TikTok about it. That video going viral overnight, bringing tens of thousands of new followers to their social media accounts. And it's also when the couple started posting about Kevin Gallagher, a college student and family friend. This is for Kevin, our college this is for kid. Kevin. Back then, dorms were shut down due to COVID, so Kevin and his roommates were staying off campus, coincidentally near Tom and Rachel. I saw him at the gym, and then he told me that the uh, cafeterias had also shut down at this point. Tom, being who Tom is, was like, oh man, come over. I can make you a meal. Like, swing by anytime. And that's what Kevin did. It allows you to have a little piece of home with you. And I would take little snippets of videos and send it to his mom. And then um, I put a compilation together through that on TikTok. And that's when like our entire profile was just comments from people being like, I want to be adopted. How do I get free food? Do we got like college students like, hey, where are you guys at? <laughs> so I think we literally just put on like our Instagram story. story yeah. I have food this weekend. I happened to look at the story that day and I was like, all right, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Student Krista Bain, who's been following Tom and Rachel's story since the beginning, became one of their adoptees. They're just so nice and friendly and welcoming, so it was easy to feel at home. Soon, Tom and Rachel were feeding hundreds of students a week, totally free of charge, no questions asked, setting up a GoFundMe and relying on donations for supplies. Nice coffee bar. Boo. The couple quickly building a community of students who would drop by once a week for a meal and a chat. Being able to take a break on Sundays and not have to worry about a meal, it was 
a relief. I knew like they would always be happy to see me. Krista sent us a uh, text message and it was just this very heartfelt letter saying how much she appreciated it. And me and Tom like looked at each other after that. We're like, yeah, we have to keep doing this. And just eight months after starting this journey, Tom and Rachel got the news they'd been waiting so long to hear. <laughs> she put in the baby nursery. Rachel giving birth to their baby girl Sutton just last month. She was just a little angel. She's perfect. Tom and Rachel plan to continue the meals in the fall. And Kevin, now a rising junior, will definitely be back. And Tom has honestly been a great role model to me. Because I've never seen someone give back so much. We're overfilled with like gratitude. That's awesome. <laughs> I don't know if they're cousins or aunts or uncles, but <laughs> he's got a lot of family members. <laughs> Coming up, the latest viral video to boost your day right after this. Welcome back. We've got one more video that's sure to brighten your day. Take a look. A woman in Dallas wanted to play a prank on her new boyfriend mm -hmm. when he came over to her parents' house for dinner. So you'll see him. He's in the plaid shirt. She got the entire family on it. Instead of saying grace before the meal, they recited the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> <laughs> Been there. He's smart though. He went pretty long. He did not say anything. <laughs> He's on it. Did y'all organize this? Yeah. Um, okay, the full spin uh, yeah. at the end gave it away. By the way, what a fun family. Oh, Sorry, man. he was a great sport, and it tells you that he fits with that family. Oh, yes. oh right. I love it. Oh, I love when we end this show with a smile. That is it for today. We will see you next week with more of The Boost on Today All Day. Popstar Plus, today I'm giving you a special look into one of fashion's biggest nights, the Met Gala. I have had the pleasure of being here on these Met Gala steps for the past few years. So this time I'm going to show you a look around so you can see what it's like behind the scenes. Stars, celebrities, and of course, those stairs. You look absolutely beautiful. Who are you wearing? Chanel is a couture spring summer from 1988. So this is Sergio Hudson. Can you tell us who you're wearing? Yes, I'm wearing Chloe. Giving some Chanel tweed moments. And here I've we are. never heard my name Chanel mentioned so many times. On this oh my carpet. God, that's you're the theme. The stars were serving glitz and glamour for fashion's biggest night. A benefit for the Metropolitan Museum of Art's Costume Institute, better known as the Met Gala. What is it about the Met Gala that people love so much? It brings all the stars together with all the best creatives potentially in the world. We're all in one room for one night. Who doesn't want to be here? This is the biggest show of the year right here. This is amazing. I drove to work at 5 a.m. this morning, 
They have been out here since almost five o'clock this morning. Wow. Everybody's waiting for you. Wow, well thank God I came. Every look honoring Karl Lagerfeld, a force in fashion for over six decades, overseeing entire eras of style for fashion houses like Chloe, Fendi, and perhaps most famously, Chanel. Paul meant to me someone that was honest, loyal, took risks, did what he wanted, loved life. He was a total genius, revolutionary, like a brilliant mind. His imagination, his creativity was like, had no limit. So what are we seeing? A lot of sequins, a lot of feathers, a lot of black and white pearls, a lot of Chanel. Outfits also adorned with special touches like bows, ponytails, and sunglasses, Lagerfeld's signature accessories. There were even a few tributes to his beloved cat, Shoe Pet. A little Doja Cat, anyone? Come here. Oh, no. Come here. Did he just purr to us? I knew Carl. Uh, he was always such a kind man. I could just imagine him looking down with a big smile on his face. Fashion wasn't the only hot topic of the evening, from film roles. I'm playing Carl in a movie. To official red carpet debuts, and even big pregnancy announcements. Congratulations! Thank you so much! I love so much that you're walking the red carpet with your little bambino. What does that feel like? This is the first time I'm sharing my news. I can't imagine a more special place. We caught up with some of our fabulous favorites. I know, I know. How, are How are you? Come on. Come on. Come on. Are you on tour with Jenna Jackson? Come talk to our third hour oh friends. Oh my God, I love you so much. How many Everybody. women here are rocking Charlotte Tilbury? Jessica Chastain, Kate Moss, Penelope Cruz, Salma, Salma Hayek. And we tried to get the inside scoop on what happens after the carpet. You never know what's going to happen in there. Well, that's what I was just about to say. Is that what you want to know? Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, you want the real you answer. Give us the real one. Come on, what happens I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. Ah, yes. There are a lot of rituals. I don't like, know. A lot of people say satanic, and I don't feel like that's fair. This is the only place in the world where you see billionaires do this. <laughs> Once you go through that doors, you get handed gold bars and you just eat caviar until you're full. <laughs> the night was just beginning for them, but for me, it was time to say a stylish goodbye. And that's a wrap for Met Gala 2023. Can I tell you a secret? It's been a long night. Shh. Another unforgettable night at the Met. Gala theme is Karl Lagerfeld, a line of beauty, honoring the late fashion designer. Here's an inside look at the exhibit by Met curator Andrew Bolton. This year's Met Gala honors an outspoken designer with a massive legacy in the fashion industry. Karl Lagerfeld died in 2019 at the age of 85, served as the creative director of Chanel for more than 30 years, and designed for brands like Fendi and Balmain despite being a controversial figure within the industry. He also helped put some of the world's fiercest fashion models on the map. Think Linda Evangelista and Claudia Schiffer, and more recently, Cara Delevingne and Bella Hadid. 
In addition to models, the designer worked with countless celebrities, including Kim Kardashian, Rihanna, and Gwyneth Paltrow. So how could celebs remember his contributions to the fashion world on the red carpet tonight? Perhaps by copying his signature style. We could see stars pay tribute to the icon's uniform, which through the years included leather gloves, dark sunglasses, and tailored white shirts. Celebrities may also choose to go big tonight, as dramatic ball gowns and bridal couture were among the styles he was known to send down the runway. Though he was also never afraid to make a statement, we could see celebs honor Carl by mirroring the zeitgeist with their fashion choices from politics to pop culture. The artist was also a master of marketing, and that could mean we see his famed logos on the Met carpet in one way or another. These famous interlocking C's became Chanel's logo under Carl's leadership. He also created Fendi's FF logo when he joined the brand in 1965. Finally, something to be prepared for tonight, a potential appearance from the late designer's beloved cat, Chopette. The famously pampered feline was adored by Carl, and the New York Post has reported that the kitty scored an invite to the gala. No word yet on if she's RSVP'd, but Chopette may give a whole new meaning to the term catwalk if she does choose to make an appearance. Pop Star Plus. I am here at the Met Gala, just steps away from the Mark Hotel, where many celebrities are known to get glammed up before heading over to the main event. In fact, check out a behind the scenes tour. Located on New York's iconic Upper East Side, this five star luxury hotel is just blocks away from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Just before the first Monday in May, dozens of VIP Met Gala guests check into the Mark Hotel, where they spend hours getting primped and pampered. Luckily, there's plenty of space in this high-rise hotel. The Mark Hotel has 106 rooms, 46 suites, and one penthouse. Come along with us to the 16th floor and we'll show you the largest penthouse suite in the United States. It takes a team of stylists, publicists, and hair and makeup artists to prepare a celeb for the Met Gala, so it's good to have a lot of space to spread out. The penthouse suite at the Mark Hotel is more than 10,000 square feet, with five bedrooms, six bathrooms, a living room, and more. A rooftop terrace overlooks Central Park and includes a view of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. After getting ready, it's time to head to the gala, which means a scheduled elevator ride to the lobby because not everyone can leave at the same time. Just off the lobby is the Mark Bar, the home of our Live from East stream where we'll be in the middle of all the action on fashion's biggest night. After exiting the hotel, celebs will pose for photographers before getting into their car, which will whisk them away to the infamous Met Steps. <laughs> Thank you. 
for sticking with me here on Pop Start Plus. Back in 2019, our Jenna Bush Hager sat down with Anna Wintour, who has been organizing the Met Gala since 1995. Take a look. Are you wearing the sunglasses because it, it, this is because the Because I haven't actually gala. been to bed. <laughs> no sleep? Very little, very little. I literally was sitting down there making my list for next year. So you already have the theme for next year? Actually, for the next three. You have created this cultural institution, this thing that people can't wait to see. Are you surprised by how much it's grown? I am, and I honestly believe that the reason that people are excited is it's this extraordinary marriage of fashion and culture. And after all, we don't want a museum to become a mausoleum. Yeah. We want it to be alive and vibrant and bring in new audiences and have people be excited about being there. This doesn't mean hiking or being outdoors. <laughs> it is interesting when you say to people, <laughs> yes, the exhibition this year is going to be on camp, and you yes. see you know, the mind going, and they're thinking hiking boots, yes, backpacks, exactly. uh, rope. It's nothing about nature. Mm -hmm. It's everything that's completely artificial and fake and uh, not really what you think it means. So when you um, expect to see people walking down the red carpet, what will they be wearing? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I know we've had some very strange requests, um, people arriving in, uh, on unusual methods of transport. And do you say yes to that? Of course. We want them to take risks, to be fearless, to have fun with fashion, and to, we all need to laugh at ourselves a little bit too. Is it true that there's a no selfie rule? There is. No, but what about that bathroom selfie a couple years well, ago? Well, I, I don't You let that go. Well, I, I think there are other processes in place now that take care <laughs> of that. But it's not my department. Do you, people text you, though, and say, what do I wear? What does camp mean? I've had some very interesting texts. I um, wish we could read them. <laughs> no, it's <not, laughs> top secret. People see these red carpets. Might not be red. What color could it be? Well, I think you just have to think about camp. Could it be glittery? Mm -hmm. Sequins? I couldn't possibly tell you. I gave you a hint. Okay. I think we're going to have an awful lot of feathers <laughs> on the whatever color carpet Monday night. Will you be in feathers? Well, that's a top secret too. You won't tell me? No, of course not. Is there a dream guest that has never come that you wish would, would make their attendance? Yes, definitely. I would love to have the Duchess of Sussex and the Duchess of Cambridge <laughs> together. That would be my dream couple. Could leave their husbands at home. Yes, it's leave two the of, husbands it's two at of home. them I want. For everybody, it's like the red carpet and the glamour of it. What makes it successful for you? What makes it feel like, all right, job well done? I mean, in the end, it, it, it's, it's for our guests and it's for the museum. And we want them to feel that the amazing effort they put into getting dressed was worth it and it was an evening that maybe they're not going to experience elsewhere. So each year, Anna, Anna, I feel like we should call her Anna, <laughs> chooses co-chairs to help her plan the event. This year, she'll have Gucci's Alexandra Michelle, Lady Gaga, Serena Williams, and Harry Styles, who she says is a Met virgin. Those are her words. Oh. Harry Styles has never been. Oh. Just like all of us. His last true. name is Styles. How is that possible? <laughs> I don't it know. Like and he should go there. You know, Harry Styles. I know. Remember direction? when he wore that pink suit here? It was amazing. Oh, that's right. but she seemed, I feel like Anna likes you. I think she does. I'm, <laughs> I'm surprised you say that with such <laughs> well, surprise. You know, such, surprise. Such She's such been incredulity. here a time or two, and I find her to be very intimidating because she's so famous, and she's, you know, you think that she's looking at your outfit, and you know, well, well, you, I you have to say, the sunglasses. Yeah, I have to say, every pregnant woman anywhere knows what it's like to get dressed in this stage of six months of pregnancy, mm -hmm. and I tried on like seven outfits. Well, you looked beautiful. It was like going to the Met Gala myself. <laughs> Check out this next interview right here on our special Met Gala episode. All right, this morning on today's Talker, the Met Gala, Natalie's here with all of fashion's most exclusive events. It's a, a night that we all remember, and you said oh. you've seen a lot of red carpets. Over the top, what about pink fabulous. Carpets? Yes, this was a fabulous pink carpet, so it already set the tone for what was going to be a very different late night. Lady Gaga, as you know, she set the bar high with an entrance. It lasted <laughs> more than 15 minutes. It was all about performance, involved multiple outfit changes. <laughs> the camp theme, of course, on full display all night. Thanks to Tiffany Hatch. So, guys, we all got a little bite to eat as well. <laughs> There's no fashion event quite like this one with celebrity guests on parade up this pink carpet with the hottest ticket in town. 
Fashion is definitely not easy, especially when you're making a statement like Lady Gaga. me two or three hours ago I needed to go as a blonde. Wow. Sexy girl, almost like in a men's shirt, tied up, getting out of the ocean, dripping, and onto the red carpet, and all wet. That, that's our vibe. But you've got a pillow built in here, right? I, no. <laughs> I'm not sleeping tonight, honey. I'm going to be wide awake for everything that's going on. I did bring some chicken, just in oh, case. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute. What's in that purse? I brought some. Okay, she's hungry. Girls got to eat. Yeah. This is fried chicken from inside Tiffany's purse. Gigi. How is it powered up? By my heart and my good thoughts. I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but Katie came out of a UPS truck. It was, her outfit was too big to have in a hotel. You golden goddess, oh, Miss Oscar Winter King. There's a chicken wing. You know who right gave me there. this? Tiffany Haddish gave me this chicken. Of course she did. <laughs> of course that it's was It's still Tiffany. good if you but, want a bite. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> You've been here before in a heist, in a movie. I have been here before. Lots of stealing jokes going on. What are you most inspired by tonight? I'm representing uh, the life-size version of the Met Barbie that they're unveiling today that it looks exactly like what I'm wearing. Very patriotic. Tell me about the camp theme for you as a designer. Well, I'm channeling Elton John from 1971. <laughs> And D was Liberace inspired. I can't tell if you have more diamonds or feathers. Yes, diamonds and feathers. That what could go wrong? wrong. Nothing, nothing. I know you get a little hungry in there, right? I mean, there's no food, really. No, no I don't know. No, there's no food. Do you know who you need to hit up for food? Who's got food? Tiffany Haddish. Are Fried chicken in her purse. Still good. I'm eating this. Go ahead, go Tiffany, for it. Tiffany, I'm eating this. <laughs> Tiffany, thank you. You saved me. <laughs> That was the most I had to eat last night. <laughs> Tiffany, thank you for Some me, too. Some people have a mic on the red carpet. You have a drumstick. <laughs> I love it, Nat. I love it. Let's bring in today's style contributor and E! News correspondent, Zana Roberts-Ross, who is also there. Zana, good morning. Good Natalie morning. says the chicken was delicious. It, it was looked delicious. Still warm and crispy. Can oh. I confess, I think this is amazing. I love looking at that. I have no idea what camp. What is that? <laughs> it was, the theme was camp. Camp. So what does that even mean? So Craziness. it's definitely not pitching tents and roasting marshmallows. Yes. Camp is all about extravagance. It's all about being ironic. It's all about humor. Yeah. And everybody really went for this. So it was so yeah. nice to see them really go for the theatrics. I mean, starting off with Lady Gaga. I mean, she was co chair of the night. So she makes the grand entrance. And even Anna Wintour had to stop at the top of the stairs to watch the whole performance. And they started the carpet 15 minutes early for this very performance. Why have one dress when you can have four? And she had a whole glam squad <laughs> on this. the carpet. She went from the pink, the parachute yeah. dress, to the little black one, then to a very sexy pink number. The giant foam was the campus moment ever. Yes. And then the big reveal was... Well, not I mean, so big a reveal. Yeah. Was the, so the very outfit for the rest of the night. I'm so confused. <laughs> Makes it easy to go to the bathroom, it though, right? It does. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the Jenner sisters. A lot of people uh, think they just knocked it amazing. out of the park. They went for it, and they went for it more than they usually do, actually. They channeled Cher and Raquel Welsh, um, and it was by Versace. The orange plume of feathers was amazing. It was super vibrant for them. Um, and both of them, I, I love the fact they went together and they really did their homework yes. and found a reference and went for it. I think one of the big themes was bigger is better, and we saw that with Cardi B and that duvet cover that she wore. <laughs> in case she got tired, it was all good. She had like 10 people helping her up she the did, stairs. She wow. people she came in Tom Brown. There was eight people helping her. This was um, a, actually, a, yes, a down-filled duvet. <laughs> um, she had the uh, Swarovski um, Stephen Jones headpiece. How did they sit and eat dinner in these outfits? So basically, the, last night, they had to really reimagine the inside part of the Met. They had to build yeah. new changing rooms for all these celebrities who were going out there. Like, oh. They had to build new structures inside. Speaking of, how, where do you put a giant cheeseburger, which was Katy Perry's oh outfit? Gosh, this was amazing. So she <laughs> The after parties last night, yes. which I may have attended, she came as a giant cheeseburger. 
So wait, she went from a candelabra oh, we'll as a chandelier. The candelabra. I don't want to miss that because that she was, was the beautiful. chandelier that was powered up. Okay. There we go. So. She was she was lit, as she said. She was retiring that word. This is a Swarovski gown. She came with Jeremy Scott of Moschino. She actually got ready on a moving bus because obviously she didn't yes. step out the hotel wearing this. Um, and she just shimmered. I mean, what, what there is no ball without a chandelier, yeah. right? She said and it weighed about 40 pounds, which I can't imagine walking around in, in high that. heels. No. Too. High heels. Okay, Zendaya. Zendaya, this was a magical moment. So she came with her long-term stylist, Law Roach. And this was a Disney princess moment. Wow. She came as Cinderella. The dress had um, batteries, wires, light packs, the whole wow. thing lit up. And this is actually okay. Law Roach, her stylist, so beautiful. Well, they're telling me I'm out of time and we have so many more to look at. Can yeah. you just talk about Jared Leto for one second? Oh, creepy. The head. Now, the head. Is, why was he carrying his head around? So is this that is camp? This is very camp. A severed head. This took six months in the Weird. making. They did this in the Gucci runway show. <laughs> I, I mean, this head was probably in many different celebrities' hands last night. It was disgusting. Well, I wonder if there was like two hairstylists. <laughs> you know, accessory one for the each year. head. He's very head. lifelike. All right, we talked about all the fabulous fashion at the Met Gala, but no look is complete without a flawless face. Girl, you got that right. <laughs> and we are lucky enough to be joined by the famed makeup artist who worked on two of last night's leading <laughs> ladies, Mr. Sir John. He's Hi, also ladies. a makeup artist behind some of Beyonce's most iconic looks. He was recently named Chief Creative Officer of Citizen Cosmetic. He's cosmetics. He's very fancy. You did Molly <laughs> Sims last night? Molly Sims and Mae Musk Okay, last night. Yes. talk about Molly's yeah. look. How did you get busy on it that? It was all about... Like, Honestly, pink, so her dress was beautiful. So it was all about pink and making sure there was monochromatic makeup, which, so the pink eyes, they match the lips. We have Gentrix lips. here. We have yeah, Gentrix, she, who's my beautiful she, model. Okay, and so, so what, what I'm did using, you do here? I'm just using like close your eyes for me, Gentrix, like a pink shadow stick. And honestly, it's stick. one of those things that it, it doesn't matter if you're from Harlem or Hong Kong, pink is something that complements everyone's complexion. So mm. don't be afraid to use that also as a blush as well. Okay. And guess what? This is a really, really natural lip that we're doing. We're doing a brown lip and we're doing a little bit of gloss on top. Your mic. Just one second. Sorry, yeah, sure. just here. Just put it right no here. No problem. And then we're okay. going to do a little gloss on top. Uh huh. And blot for me. And that brings a little disco into the daytime. Oh, disco into the daytime. Yeah. And I think gonna... Gentrix is because she works on the nine o'clock hour. I feel like she's going to quit now and go bottle. So, <laughs> no. Gentrix, please don't leave us. Gentrix, uh, she is an agent calling her. <laughs> I know. She's very busy. And so, right. guys, we over here. Well, we let's have talk. Alex. Let's first, before we get to her, let's yeah. talk about let's talk about May Musk. Yeah, so, so, so you you did her makeup. Yes. Tell us about last night and what that was like. So, and what, what were you trying to do with May? So what I love about May's look is I love the fact that she's super classic, classic and timeless. But I, but also we can still use color. Color is something that never needs to leave us. So a little bit of a punctuation of color or pop of color is something that we all can do. So what I'm going to do now, I'm on taking Alexandra. on Alexandra, mm -hmm. I'm taking a cobalt blue eyeliner, close your eyes. Wait, me. cobalt blue? Yeah, and it brings. You a are little. wild. And what you can do is all you have to do is give yourself a little strip of cobalt, Ooh. and yeah. it's something that's universally flattering on all complexions. Oh, okay. Like okay, and so see how that gives a, such a change to Oh the my eye. gosh, oh. and plus she has blue eyes, eyes too. You know, but it's a small, small intellectual change that doesn't take a lot of work. Wow. And it doesn't matter if you're a minimalist or if you like a lot of color, it's something that we can all do. Very little, wow. I should have done some cobalt with this outfit. I, by the way, that would look, wouldn't that look good right, on Yvonne too? And, and you, know what, and, you know what, <laughs> get over here. I don't want to make your makeup better smack. <laughs> <laughs> but the cool thing is it lo really looks good on all complexions, and take a look at this, guys. Don't be afraid to make sure that your lips are nude. And a nude is a lip enhancing neutral. It doesn't necessarily have to take away your lips like we thought about nudes yeah. in the 90s. Yeah. But it's just a more modern take on enhancing. So do the you think nude is the way to go? When I think about nudes, I think about what enhances a lip shape. So yeah. any color that enhances a lip yeah. shape did, technically kind of is quantified nude. as a nude. Yeah, yeah. A little good. Pop. Nude with a pop. All nude right. with a pop. Now let's talk about Ciara. So Ciara so, had she's got yes. a, she's got a beautiful look and Dalia's gonna show us in a second, but yes. let's look at what what Ciara's look was. What are you trying to replicate? Chrome, it was chromatic and the thing I love is like gilded. So the, the theme last night was gilded. When yes. I think about gilded I think about light reflection. Close your eyes for me. And so when I think about light reflection that means that you don't necessarily have to foil your eyelids but we're going to position this liner just above the black line and it's going to give a beautiful light reflection that opens up the space oh so take a look at that Let's see. see how that opens up the space of the eye uh, that by the way, little piece she's just, I'm but she's, just, she's just gorgeous I mean, it's everybody kind of like, who, who are you people uh -huh.
Oh, wow. And so this little pop of chrome is all you need to really just enhance the look. And um, it's all about making sure it's wearable. So yeah. even though last night was the mat ball, how can I wear this in the daytime? In you got a date for tonight? Because <laughs> yeah. you, you will now. I think okay. she's going to have to. Wait, what kind of moisturizer do you use for real? Uh, for real? Yeah. Neutrogena. Neutrogena. <laughs> okay. Right. She was like, I love it. So, but, so, but you right. see this foiling? Close your eyes. It's really good. It looks great. Yeah. Sir John, brilliant. Uh, you can check out Sir John. He's got a master class, a makeup master class. He's one of the site's newest instructors. And to get a master class yeah. is a big it's deal. It's a huge deal. So congratulations. congratulations. Thank you, guys. Wow, what an icon and what an incredible night. Until next time. With over 750,000 subscribers, Stephanie and Cloud Ramos are online hits, whether they're cooking up recipes in the kitchen or on the road reviewing the best food in Texas. Fans cannot wait to see what the Ramos sisters are up to. That's right, and we can't wait to get a look at the festive dish they're cooking up for us this morning. Stephanie and Cloud, good morning to you. Happy Cinco de Mayo. And what are you cooking up for us today? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today we're going to be cooking some... Uh, skirt steak tacos oh, for you and we're yeah. gonna get started with a big big bowl you're gonna need one so we can get some good marinade going All you're gonna need some lemon juice yeah oil mm. keep it nice and moist in there soy sauce and we have plenty of spices that are gonna satisfy just about everybody mm. we have some ground cumin paprika Oh, we left some paprika behind. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you get it all in the bowl. The <laughs> That's the marinade some for chili the chili powder. Okay. This is our marinade, Got yes. Okay. We're going to add some black pepper. For those of you that like sugar, you're going to love this. <laughs> okay. And some ground ginger. We're also going to be using some uh, chicken bouillon, but you can use whatever you're comfortable mm. for a soup base. Something like that will always work. Mix that around. Oh, that cumin did make the difference in this. You it can smell. Like grill. <laughs> you're grilling outside. I like and that. And that's where the, fa the flavor is going to pull through. Whether you're grilling outside or in your home, mm -hmm. this is just going to be magic. And how so go you ahead and take that? You're going to be excited about this. Okay. You can do one hour or overnight for best flavor. Oh. Mm. So either way, the flavor pulls through with these seasonings. Can I tell you all I've done it for 30 minutes and it works just fine? <laughs> so good. Speaking of I, I love it. It's true. I love that you're using skirt steak. It's one of my favorites. But my question is, do you cut all the fat off the skirt steak or do you leave it on? 
You know, I'm very lucky where I purchase my skirt steak, they tend to cut most of the fat off and just leave a little bit to give that flavor that you need to keep it nice and juicy. So make sure you mm. trim some of that off. That's a good question. During winter, keep the fat. You know, we need the extra pounds. <laughs> we do. Uh, I tend to leave it it <laughs> Yes. So go ahead and coat your skirt steak. And Cloud, do you want to take over that lovely grill you have there? I got it. All right, All Seth. Right. I'm going to heat up some if you want to. All right. Well, let's go ahead. Let's turn it over. <laughs> so let's practice our virtual wedding dances, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, you hear that sizzle? Yes. Wow. Engage in your it's food, nice smell that aroma, and if it's a little too spicy, go ahead and uh, give it a little toss. But this is very mild. How long very you, mild, full of flavor. How long are you going to cook that steak? It's going to depend on what you like, but today what we're going to do, we're going to cook it for about uh, three to four minutes on each side, okay. but only flip it one time to keep the nice, juicy tenderness, okay? Mm. So while this continues to cook over here, we have something really specially plated for you guys so you can see their tacos oh, right here. Okay. We have it grilled for you. Mm, let's see. Uh, Are you doing flour? I hear the mm. mm. Oh, my gosh. What an excellent question. <laughs> Our group is from oh, the state of good. Sonora, so... We generally do flour, but today we are so lucky. Can't see. Carson, Carson can't we have see. Stop. waiting for you right here. I can't uh, see. Wait, but, wait, hold on. Go ahead, though, Cloud. You said, so you're going to go uh, normally flour, but corn on this? We're going to do corn on this because we got our hands on some freshly made tortillas this morning. Mm. They were delivered yesterday. Mm. And so how many coffees do you normally eat? That is a thing of beauty. Ladies, thank you so much. The full recipe for the Ramos Sisters Tacos and more at today.com slash food. Okay, (laughs) one way to teach kids about the importance of traditions and culture is through family recipes. And that's exactly what our friend Marcela Valladolid is doing in her debut children's cookbook. What is it? What is it called? Tell me what your what it's called. Cocinando on Cookster. I love it. It's a collection of Mi Familia's recipes. Yes. And today she's making one of those recipes in the book. Marcella, we're yes. so happy to have you in person. Yes. yes. So welcome in. Yes. And Our, this is really a book for your daughter. Is mm-hmm. that right? It really is. She always used to make me read cook, cook cookbooks to her at night, but she's not in school yet, which means we only speak Spanish at home with the kids yeah. until they go to school. So mm-hmm. I would be translating in real time, and I was like, I need to write a book for her that's written in English Brilliant. and Spanish. Oh my God, so you're incredible. Here okay. we are. So, so we're so starting with some flautas. flautas. Yes, it's Hispanic Heritage Month, which is kind of weird for me because I celebrate Hispanic yeah. Heritage like every day of yeah. my life. Yeah. I, yes. But thank you for the invitation. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, thank you for coming to cook. This no, is absolutely. So flautas. And this book is about all those little tips, right? So flautas are rolled up taquitos. And people usually don't know, like, the simple tips. Like, if you warm up a tortilla, it's much easier for you oh. to roll it up oh. without it breaking. So you can microwave. Yeah, that makes sense, right? It, it's that, just so easy. And, and that's then, just shredded chicken? It's is that just it? shredded chicken okay. that you can get from the rotisserie okay. chicken from the market if you don't right. want to boil it yourself. Right. Like, make your life easy. And okay. you don't need to put anything on it to make it stick. You just kind of... You don't. And, and you the trick the, with flautas is if you're not an experienced flauta maker, like, the women in Mexico, they don't need to do the toothpick thing. They figure it out. God knows how they make it stick, but it's right. thick. But if you're not a professional flauta maker, so you use the toothpicks. And, and you can fry the toothpicks? Oh, absolutely. You just have to make sure... Yeah, that's really hot oil. But there you go. And you just leave those in there for a couple of minutes, and maybe we'll take them out so we don't burn your studio. Okay, I have a crazy question. Yeah. Can you air fry flautas? Absolutely, 100%. So my idea would be you brush it with a little bit of oil, throw it in the air fryer, and that's it. Wait, I am going to try to air fry, fry a flauta you, tonight. You, you can. It works. You can. I'll tell you what you can do. You can bake or air fry tortilla chips, too, but we'll get there in a second. Okay. You're going right. to love it. So okay. now we make the rest. So another thing about the book is introducing folks and kids to, like, the traditional stuff, but not too spicy. Mm-hmm. A pico de gallo salsa or salsa mm-hmm. bandera because it has the colors of the flag. You've got some tomatoes that are seeded, some onion, mm-hmm. cilantro for sure, mm-hmm. jalapeno, and you can mm. measure like... But do you do the jalapenos without seeds? You do it without the seed. The spice is actually in the vein, oh. not so much oh. the seed. Oh. Yeah, so you take out the vein. And if you don't like spice, just do a little sprinkle of jalapeno. My mom's trick, oil in the salsa. Oil and, and, yeah. and lemon. And lemon, salt and, and a little pepper. salt and pepper, and that's it. And you've got your beautiful salsa. That's okay. beautiful. Yeah, and then oh, to dress them up, Yum. another great one for my mom, always dress the lettuce. A little oil, a little vinegar, brings mm. out all of the flavor, mm. and then you just dress it, and then go Mexican with like a big, yeah. huge, you know. And salad on top almost. The whole thing, and okay. you've got some beautiful Let's ones try, here. here. Here's some flautas. I'll dress these And what do you, you add eat. on top? Cayeta cheese? Yeah, so dress lettuce. Like, that's one of the things I teach in my cooking mm. class. Always dress the lettuce in these Mexican antojitos. A little mm. cotija mm. cheese and Mexican crema because why not? Because mm. it's so delicious. Mm. 
Come on over, bring your Wait, flautas, ladies. It's so mm. crunchy and yummy. Okay, and you were having like a, like a heart attack because we baked the chips, I which I love. I think it's a brilliant idea. Yeah, absolutely. So here's the thing, tortilla chips are awesome, but if you bake them, you might be like a little more willing to put them on the dinner table, it's right? It's good, good for your kids. And here's what's great about this recipe. Like you brush them with oil and Mask, you bake them. What is this? It's a um, corn tortilla. You it has to be corn. You can and cut it up. Okay. Yeah, you cut it up. You can cut it up into stars. You can use okay. cookie cutters. You can okay. have so much fun Wait, with that's it. that's so cute. So much fun. I do it for Christmas and do Christmas shapes and make like a tortilla chip Christmas too. Of but anyway, that's do. a different, you. That's what, a different what is that spice you're putting on? Anything you want. I'm using chili lime powder, a little bit of thyme, a little bit of rosemary. Mm. And that's the thing about mm. homemade chips. You can season them with whatever you want. And so how, simple. So they're brushed with oil, seasoned, and then you put them in the oven? 350, 15, 20 minutes that's until it? they're nice and crisp. You okay. want to make sure they're dried out. Nobody likes soggy tortilla chips. Now you're going to make us a little guac. Simplest thing in the world. All of these recipes come from my mom, which is what's so special about the book. The secret ingredient what? to guac. Pause is distilled white vinegar. What? That's why you guys were eating it and you were like, oh Wait, my God. What? It's I've really, never heard that. It's it's how my mom used to make it when I was a kid. So and li and li is that lime? lime? Yeah, and then you just mash it in salt. Lime and that's, vinegar. that's all you need for a good what about guacamole. What about cilantro, no? You can. But, but I'm a purist when it comes to guacamole. And you don't put tomatoes, which I'm is interesting. You yeah, can. This, you certainly this. can. You you can find like pomegranate seeds, mango, yeah. anything around yeah. across it's Mexico. Like way. people are getting adventurous. But for me, guacamole is just this with some baked chips that are seasoned. And that's it. This mm. is amazing. So good, right? We love these. Mm. Thank you. We're going to try mm. it. So. Mm -hmm. If you want these recipes, all you have to do is go to today.com slash food. Mm. And Marcella, everybody check out her book. At, it's her children's cookbook. It's for all of our kids at today.com slash books. The last time she was on, remember her daughter? The N Naked Barbie. Naked Barbie. Naked Barbie. Naked we won't forget. Hola, Hola. 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 All right. <laughs>
sauce is mustard. You told us that earlier in the show. Well, to, to bind the uh, to bind the the rub to the uh, brisket, yeah, we throw mustard on there. It's a, a common trick a lot of guys use, and it works really well, and adds a little bit of flavor too. And this is our jalapeno cheese sausage. We jalapeno cheese sausage. It, it's the best one. Oh my gosh, you had me at Get some pickles and some onions on there, Corey. Wow. We are good to go. That is amazing. That's a that really is a big dog. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, so what is your favorite part of your restaurant? I see some banana pudding, some cobbler, some mac and cheese, collard greens. It, I'm a meat guy, so the meat's my favorite. I'm kind of in charge of that. But uh everything is delicious. We we everything's homemade in our restaurant, except the bread and the tortillas. Uh everybody asks, is, is everything homemade? Yep, always homemade. Uh but we just we we're, we like it all, so we try to put our best in everything we make. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm gonna try I, I'm gonna try the big dog right here, but I'm kind of scared about what this is gonna look like. In fact, I might have to try it when we go to commercial break. If people are having breakfast, yeah. they might be overwhelmed. Well, we're gonna get a tray cut for you, and then that way you know you can get a little sample of everything that we but have out here for you. Today. I have to say, I've already tried it. This mac and cheese hoda. Yeah, give it. How is it? Mm. Is Never it, had anything like it. Oh my God, I want that. So, Never had anything like it. Can you cook that stuff if you don't have a smoker? What are you supposed to do if you don't have a smoker? Yeah, so so what do you guys, Hoda wants to know when you don't have a smoker, how do you cook these meats? Uh, your you best, don't. <laughs> yeah, it's tough, it's tough, but your best bet, like maybe you try to try to try a charcoal grill might work. Uh, you, you, you can, can kind of get a deflector plate and some of the Weber kettle grills and stuff. Mm. You know, we use an offset smoker, which mm -hmm. is just nothing but smoke. There's no direct heat ever going on the meat. Mm. And yeah. so, you know, the briskets that we have here today, they smoked for about 12 hours. And They're delicious. And by the way, this banana pudding, really good. Hold on, I'm bringing you back some food. Shout send out to back, send it back. Send it back. We love oh, you. This is your mom's that recipe. Awesome. Awesome. I love you. We'll be back show, right after this. Good. Joining us this morning, Jocelyn Delk Adams, founder of Grand Baby Cakes, also the author of Everyday Grand, which, oh, by the way, is available for pre-order as we speak. Sure is. And just, <laughs> yeah. Jocelyn is here to share her spin on a classic and easy weeknight dish, the casserole. And to cook along with us, all you have to do is scan that QR code to order the ingredients 
with just one click, you select add ingredients to cart, and then you schedule a pickup or delivery. It's that easy, almost as easy as making the dish itself. Yep. Welcome back. And you're going to help me. I am going I am <laughs> going to help this morning. So tortilla chip casserole could not be easier. Tortilla you can get the kids involved. Casserole. You can even do this, okay? Because I know you can be, <laughs> I know you can be cooking challenge, so we're going to get True. this together. So to start, I'm going to show you how we're going to dice up these like bell pepper, okay. right? You're going to get these strips, just kind of get them together really easily, and then just go down to create like these small little dices, okay. right? Really easy. Just gather all up, and that's all you Even I do. can do that, Josh. Yeah, you can do that. You can do that. Yeah. See? You're okay. winning already. So we're going to start on our meat mixture. I've got some ground beef here. going to add this to some olive oil. You hear that nice sizzle? And I assume you could easily swap that out with turkey or yeah, you even ground turkey, chicken. Even ground chicken. <laughs> okay. Yep, whatever you got is fine. And then I'm going to add in our bell pepper here. And then can you add in that diced onion yes, and some garlic yes, for me? So that's it. That's pretty that's simple it. so far. So yeah, you got to start cooking this down. You're going to brown it. How much garlic is that? Uh, I mean, hey, is I it? love garlic. Okay. All right, add it in, all right? Oh, yes, add as much as you want in there. And then this is when we get into the flavors. Like, we're going to add in two salsas. So if you have Taco have Tuesday that. tonight, of course, you yes. might have some leftover salsas. Mm -hmm. Add in the red and the green. That's going to give us ample flavor like here. chunky one, Josh? Yeah, yeah you can grab a chunky one. Yeah, you for that chunky. texture. Yeah. You take so your salsa seriously. Out there. I do. You can't play around with salsa, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We're gonna add in this salsa, and then we're gonna add in some really taco seasoning. So just store bought taco store seasoning. Store bought. Wow. Get it in the little Easy. packet and just toss it all together okay. with some chicken stock. Chicken stock. What's the word, Al? It's very good. Mm. So, really so good. yummy, Crunchy. right? So yummy. Oh my gosh! So you're gonna cook this together. This is our swap. So this Hello, turns the magic into of that. TV. Okay. Yep, looks really good. You're gonna let that kind of thicken up into this, and then we're gonna start adding in our additional texture. We've got is that cream of mushroom? It is. Oh, I love that. I know. It it's makes it so creamy. For you can throw it into that. everything. We throw mushroom it into soup? everything at my home. Yeah. Everything. Oh, mushroom, mushroom soup. soup. Oh, yeah. Just oh, yeah. throw it into everything. Wow. It makes everything so much better. Why do you like it so much? What the, so um, it's so creamy. It adds mm. so much richness along with like the sour cream mm. in this. It mm. really Umami. makes that texture so great. Yeah. And I love anything with mushroom too. We're going to add in some black beans okay. too. Grab that, add that in, and of course the sour cream I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Throw that in too for that extra richness and that tang. Ooh, and then we're gonna like add in some cheese. cheese blend. Yep, get that in there. Right. And we're gonna stir that together. Okay. Oh, oh, nice. And then this is when you get the kids involved, or mm -hmm. you can get rid of like your morning aggression. I'm gonna have you like, <laughs> you know, just go for oh, it. And yeah, then, you know, you oh, get that get out. The kids. Get the kids. Get the kids. I know. He's like, I'm taking that over. Yeah. Right. You're gonna crunch oh, that so together. This is cool. This goes in the pan. Goes in. And you then can, you build it. Yeah. And then you just start building it. And this is where we get into our casserole. It's almost like a lasagna. You're going to just layer it up. Oh. Mm. The oh, bottom that's... layer is Doritos or whatever yeah. corn chip is? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. you, can you can do the Frito. cheesy ones. Mm. Fritos. Mm. Fritos. Mm. Like whatever flaming your faves hot. are. Yeah. The flaming Hot. Mm. You know, get oh, some like spice that. in there. Like whatever you love. Like you can really adapt this and make this into whatever this you really like. Good. It's almost yeah. like a layered dip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it is. Really and like you bake it off and you get all those textures. You get the crunch. Oh, it's so good. Creaminess. How long do you bake it? About 30 minutes. Okay. And then you're going to add some cheese on top. Don't add the cheese at the beginning and put the foil over it because it'll, it'll stick, stick to, to the foil. foil. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. So do it. Take the foil this. off this and then great. just add the cheese and then let it get all oh, okay. mm -hmm. And then it comes it's out. So I'm going to taste it. Yeah, Tell oh us about gosh. this new cookbook. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. It's called Everyday Grand yeah. and it's all about just mm -hmm. loving and enjoying every single moment of life. So like great. I wanted to just make a book that just made everyone happy, mm -hmm. right? Finding so much joy and just beyond just holidays, like you got a good hair yeah. day, celebrate. celebrate. Yeah. Got the book is hey, terrific. Ooh, that's good. Think and Al endorsed it. I was so grateful to awesome. him. I mean, like, hey, you changed the tire, celebrate. That's good. Your four-year-old's gonna love this. <laughs> yeah, she loves it. Thank it's you, so good. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Jocelyn. Jocelyn, love thank it. you again. There are a few things that bring life so much joy as tacos and margaritas, <laughs> or in my case, a mocktail. So here are <laughs> some great ideas for celebrating Cinco de Mayo this weekend. Author of the new cookbook called Fiestas, Marcela Valladolid. Ooh, Good, I know, I had a little accent. <laughs> yeah, so beautiful with my name, thank, thank you. you. Thank Marcella, you, Marcella, so you. no pressure. We're going to cook with my mom and her only recipe 
is tacos. Listen, I didn't know I was going to cook with the first lady today. I'm a little bit nervous. If I mess something up, I didn't know this was happening. So I'm sorry. I apologize in advance. I apologize. So in you advance. are you're from Mexico. I am. Where no one ever celebrated Cinco de Mayo. Well, of course, it's a kind of an Americanized okay. holiday, right? 100. percent It's like I'm on a tour, uh, breaking, telling people that we don't we've never celebrated in Mexico. But we, but we love that you in love te margaritas. In Texas, we really we do yeah. celebrate it. So what are we making? Let's start with the. This is a vegetarian taco. Right? It is. I love to do a ton of vegetarian right. food, and and my kids love it as well. And this is a kid favorite. So anything that the kids get excited about, I get excited about. Okay, so this cool. Is, basically, we're making a, a vessel, a tortilla out of zucchini. So you're just going to take that cheese, cheese and throw it in there. Mommy, you want to put this the is eggs in? Sure. Zucchini. Super important that you wring it out. You have to get rid of all the moisture. Otherwise, it's just super soggy and it won't turn into tortilla. Ready for the eggs? Yes, eggs, and that's what's going to bind it together. And just some seasonings: garlic powder, salt and pepper. You can add chipotle powder, um, a little bit of oregano, whatever spices you favor you can add that and the so kids go that. for the the kids go for the tortilla made out of zucchini totally I think adding the seasonings and make it making it nice and savory and if you add cheese in the filling or mushrooms and anything that they like chicken shredded chicken they love that so if the kids go for it what about Meredith Vieira I, like like it? Well, I don't know we're gonna have to ask her if you don't like it just please pretend that you do <laughs> oh, of course. thank you so you take a scoop of this super easy and then you're just gonna gently pat it out we have one here Maybe you could use a little bit more. You can make it mini for the kids. They would love that too. Yes. So you just pat it out, you bake it 350 for about 20 minutes, and you're set. Mm, so this is all like a meatless the, Monday. Totally. It's yeah, absolutely great. meatless Monday. And you can add direct shredded chicken if there's somebody in the family that's like, I need some meat. Even okay. though it's a Friday. Yes. Right. So you've got sweet potatoes, garlic, a little bit of chili powder. I favor chipotle. If you don't have any uh, powders, just take a spice grinder and throw a dried chili in there, and it's a great solution for mm. um, getting dried yeah, chili. Yeah, sweet too. potatoes too have like that kind of meaty texture. They do. Right. They're very, they, they're very filling, right? So it's a great part of your dinner. So all we've got all the accoutrements here for the traditional taco. I love that. Um, I yeah, I have to take this over is here. Bush is cooking. <laughs> my food, and I'm very excited. I'm sorry. No, we <laughs> like that you're excited. I'm very excited. And by the way, my mom likes vegetarian food, so it feels oh, like I yeah, think, perfect. I think you love this if you if you if you choose to it make it. It feels like you picked the honest. perfect recipe for her. Okay, so then you take those sweet potatoes, and we mix those with a little bit of kale. We just add those here. We know how that wilts. It looks like a lot, but it's going to end up getting wilted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Season the taste with salt and pepper. Add more of the chili if you like. You know what I love too is it's a taco bar, which yes. is so fun for kids. Yes. Mm -hmm. To make their tacos perfect. Okay. That guy there. You know what? Let's All the seasonings. Let's are we walking? Taste. We're going to walk, tasting? but we also want to taste. Okay. Taste. okay. Do you like it? Yeah, it's Mom, spicy. do you want some? Sure. Thanks. Okay. Wow, doesn't it doesn't look, look delicious? good? Okay, we'll have a little bite. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Good. Very good. good. Wonderful. Wonderful. Mm. She's going to like it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wrap it up for our lunch. Uh oh. That, don't zoom in on that. Let's go back here, Mom, for our mocktail. <laughs> okay, I will hold your plate. I will hold your thank plate. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Mm. We'll Isn't that good? Here. Very good. Here, we'll put that over here. Okay, thank okay, you. So, really mocktail. Yes, uh, dragon fruit, a pitaya. I grew up with a pitaya, agua fresca in my fridge every day of my life. Super simple. And you can always cut these open, and you don't know if you're going to get white or this beautiful fuchsia color. Okay. So it's kind of like you hope you get this color because it makes a beautiful drink. Yeah. Pitaya or the dragon fruit. A little bit of soda. You want to add that at the end, though. A little bit of fresh lemon or lime juice. Either one will work. Mm -hmm. Plenty of sugar. About a cup, a cup and a wow. half. Wow. Mm. And those are virgins. But this will be great with either tequila or, or vodka, right? vodka or a light rum would be great. So you just blend this up. Okay. Mm, delicious. Marcella, you yes. did it again. Thank this you. Beautiful. Delish. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you were excellent. Thank you. So to make these recipes at home, check out today.com slash food. And to get Marcella's book, go to today.com slash shop.
National Margarita Day. Yes, it is. It's one of my favorite days of the year, although I'm too bad it lands on a Tuesday after a long well, weekend. Well, there's a new recipe going viral that let's give it a try. Okay, so we're going to try it. Okay, so in the blender. Yeah, what do you do? What's this? In the blender. That's the blender. I know, but something's in there. Um, you put one half cup it's sugar. That's a lot there. of What's sugar, y'all. No, thank you. Uh, something's in there already. Okay, just sugar water. Okay, tequila. You add tequila. Wait. Maybe it's already in there. That's the sugar water. Oh, sugar water. Sorry. But I don't think y'all should put sugar. I think you should put agave. But anyway, okay. this is not my recipe. One cup of tequila. Okay. Wow. To your tasting. You put a little contro. Okay. Two cups of what? Oh, we haven't done the Two sugar yet. Two cups of cold Here's the ice water. Put it in, yeah. That's a lot Two of sugar. No, it's not. Yeah, it Wait. is. No, that's for the drinks. Okay. That seems good. And then put in the limes. Oh. Oh. You Two. toss all of it? Do you Quarter, squeeze you peels it? Peels on. Peels, peels on. on. Put it in. Put it in. Put it in. Dump, dump. Good. Ew. Is that it? Oh, salt. Salt. No, no, no. The salt's for the rim. Is the salt for the rim? Oh, a pinch of salt. Just a pinch. You know what? You are very <laughs> controlling. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> just a pinch. Okay, just a pinch. Okay. This is gonna be great. I don't turn know. It on. Wait, should we put the ice? No, no, it's not no. Wait, do you hit green smoothie? Hit green smoothie. Why? Because. Wait, what? With the peels on? Okay, is that enough? I think so. That's good. You gotta turn it off. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just working your control. <laughs> It was hard. You're like, you ready? Stop it. Turn Stop it. it. Okay, now we Wait. strain it. We pour it over the strainer. Oh, sorry. Is yeah, your finger stuck? Yeah, it was. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Pour Hold it on. over the strainer. This is the best recipe we've ever made. Wait, don't you want the foam? I think you're just getting the oh, peels out. The peel peels out. out. Is someone telling you in your ear? No. Why do you keep pausing? Because I'm not understanding <laughs> this. I'm not good at recipes. Here, do you want to try it? Uh, I, I, there's something very soothing about watching it strain. Isn't there? Yeah. All right. I want to drink the one I made. I don't want to drink that one. You know what I think this would be good for you? What? Is your mojito recipe. <gasps> I yes! think it would be great for your mojito okay. recipe. Oops. Wow. Okay. okay. I'm gonna, I want to drink this one because I remade it. Let's see how it tastes. Wow. Is it strong? It's too sweet for me. Oh, I love sweet. You're going to be into it then. It's also a little strong. No, try this one. Here, use a straw. <laughs> oh, that's much that's better. Good. What? What's the difference? Taste this one. Here, okay. you taste this one. <laughs> <laughs> They're all good. Maybe they no, just added extra that, liquor for us. Taste I'm sure. that one. Yeah. I'm right, right? That's okay. really. <laughs> this, is, really fun. this is a great day. Good morning, guys. Welcome to the Boost. Graduation season is here. So today, we celebrate the class of 2023, spotlighting extraordinary students and sharing advice and words of wisdom from recent grads. But first, all across the country, high school seniors are about to graduate and have declared where they will be heading to college. Three students reveal their picks live on today. Take a look. We've got a group of outstanding seniors with us this morning. They have yet to announce their decisions, but they are about to do it in front of their family and friends and a nation that's watching. First up, this is Jennifer Woes. She's from Elmsford, New York, and she's a senior at Woodlands Middle High School. Good morning. Good morning. This nice is so exciting. <laughs> I am very excited. You, I can tell we're just talking before the commercial break. Like you're oozing with excitement. Your parents, your friends and family behind you, they're ready to find out but we're going to make them wait a little bit longer. <laughs> so tell, tell us first about just your high school experience. How's high school been for you? Um, my high school experience has always been an amazing experience. I've definitely grown as a person. Um, I've definitely done a lot of leadership roles, so that like helped me build my character. I'm the vice president of Key Club. I am also the vice president of National Honor Society. Um, I'm also like to um, help with my community, so 
like you know outreaches in my church and everything. Um, I played basketball for three years in high school. My God, girl, uh, how did you have time to do all this? <laughs> um, well, my school community, I don't, I don't. It's hard work, you know, dedication. I'm um, also putting in that time management and everything. Um, I also. Uh, I like to do a lot of things. I like to go into theater. We just finished our fa um, show Fame in Elizabeth High School. Good <laughs> goodness. Here's the thing. You're not going to brag on yourself, but I will. We also know that you did very, very well academically as well, which is probably why you're, you're going to a, a pretty impressive school. Um, what are you going to study in, in school? I will be studying political science. What do you want to be when you're, when you're done with school? A lawyer. Of course. <laughs> All right, you ready to do it? Yes. Ready to tell them? Yep. Y'all ready? All right. Okay. Your mom is behind you. <laughs> Take that one. Okay. There's the drum roll. Okay. One, two, three. Oh. Where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> Columbia. She's going to Columbia. Yes. Jennifer. Mom, Mom, how do we feel? Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Yes! And this is your sister? Nancy! I'm excited! <laughs> and she won't be too far, Mom. She won't be too far. All right, Chanel, over to you. Oh my goodness, this is so, isn't this great? When young people do great things, I think we should celebrate them. I want you to meet Addison Wall from Cary, North Carolina. She's a senior at Green Hope High School. And as Craig said, these kids don't like to brag on themselves, but we'll brag on them. Addison, I was just reading, you have an incredible work ethic. You worked part-time jobs since you were 14 years old. You ran cross country all four years of high school. And you're truly going the extra mile with your community service. In fact, why don't you tell us how many community hours or community service hours you've put in? I have done around 200 hours of community service. 200 hours. <laughs> Uh, of community service. Tell me some of the groups that you volunteered with. We hear you're a rock star where you're from. <laughs> I volunteered with Habitat for Humanity, the Interfaith Food Shuttle, um, the Flower Shuttle, Make-A-Wish, uh, Red Cross Club, and then also I think oh my goodness, it, you're so passionate about volunteering, they wanted us to know that. What is it about volunteering that you love? Just seeing the impact it's had on my community has really developed my passion for it and seeing what I've been able to do. I love it. Okay, so you said you wanted to study what, business uh, or? Global relations. Global relations. Yes. Okay, so where will you study? Are we ready? Okay, so we have a backpack here. Now it's Addison's turn. All right, Addison, go for it. She it's is going to tell us what such a tough time for so many kids trying to get into college but I'm so happy she's a hard worker and she's very level-headed and has uh, it's just self-driven so I'm, she's done all of this on her own I'm super proud of her. she's a good kid I love this okay let's do another one shall we I love celebrating our kids Jacob you're not kid you're a young adult all right Jacob your turn this could not be more exciting all right guys I'm happy to be here with Ethan Ty from Old Bridge New Jersey he is a senior at Old Bridge High School Ethan good morning man good morning. so we're gonna do this a little bit backwards because we've been talking Talking to students first, then mothers. I'll be right back. Your mother's over here. Come with me, guys. Your mom, is this May? May, what's going on? How are you? Good, good. How are I you? Heard, good. The rumor is, May, you are a Today Show super fan. You were really annoyed <laughs> that Ethan hadn't decided yet. But then when this all came about, maybe you feel a little bit better. Yeah, I hope so. I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> Any advice for Ethan before he does this? Um, no. I Just do it. Just do it. it. Okay, May, <laughs> I'll be right know. back. All right, Ethan. Uh, my understanding is uh, this has been a decision a long time in the making. Before we get to it, I want to know what you know. What's the main factor in your decision? What were you studying in high school? Uh, what's going to be the thing that pulls you to college? Uh, I definitely. Uh, I think it's crazy that I'm going to a school right now, but uh, I'm going to the Rutgers Engineering Program. So I got accepted into the school, and I'm really excited. For Wait that. a minute, dude! You just revealed it in oh, front of oh, everybody. Oh, Come on. Rutgers got a great marching band. Ethan couldn't wait to tell you guys. Come on out. Rutgers marching band. Look at this.
check this out. Ethan's also a dancer. Give us your dance. Go. Oh, Ethan wanted, Ethan wanted, he didn't want any suspense. He just wanted to get right to it. Uh, a big thanks, of course, to the Rutgers University oh marching goodness. band, the Scarlet ah. Knights. They're a talented band. By the way, they're going to be marching in this year's Macy's oh, Thanksgiving nice. Day Parade for the very oh, first welcome. time. we got to get Ethan out there, too, with those moves. I love this. Mom, how you doing back there? You all right? He didn't want to wait. He, he got it for you. What do you guys think? It. I love the moves, dude. Uh, okay. Amazing, I love, right? I love, love, dude, love Congratulations. Love but wait, there's more? Uh, I believe there is. There is a little bit more. Uh, one more surprise. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, and by the way, Ethan borrowed those breakaway pants from you. <laughs> Pretty impressive. Uh, Macy's is going to help you guys kickstart your college shopping. They are giving each one of you a four thousand dollar gift card. At the heck of a spring. First thing you're going to buy is a bigger a bigger wallet to fit those <laughs> gift cards. Congratulations. You happy? Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. We're so happy for you, too. Congratulations. So Thank you. Congrats, congrats. Wow. All of you guys. Aww. College Decision Day. It's a thing, isn't it, Craig? Yeah, it is. And by the way, if you're watching and listening right now, best of luck today if, if you are, are picking your college or your faith, because it's stressful. It is. Know? It is. And even if you don't get into the college exactly. that you wanted, you're still going to do great. It Trust is me. all going to be okay, Trust me. isn't it? Yeah, all it right. Is. Congratulations, guys. And all congrats, the parents guys. and family and friends, all of you. It takes a village. Congratulations to all. We cannot wait to see what they accomplish over the next four years. Well, as their journey to college begins, Jenna Bush Hager spoke with recent grads about the end of their college journey. They were eager to reflect on the good and the bad and share valuable advice and lessons learned along the way. I regret not traveling abroad. Not taking my freshman year more serious. Not exploring more majors. Some say college can be the best four years of your life. <laughs> But research shows nearly two-thirds of college graduates say they regret something about their experiences. Topping the list, student loans, studying the wrong major, and not networking enough. I didn't, you know, seek out my professor's help to try to get those internships. Carrie Govan and Anna Namnum were sorority sisters at Ohio University. Now they're mothers to college students themselves. One piece of advice that my mom tried to teach me early on was to treat college like a job. So to go to campus early, stay at campus, stay dedicated. I'm not sure I totally listened to that advice. <laughs> if you could do one thing differently, what would you do? My biggest college regret is not taking accounting and understanding every last bit of it. I regret making the choice of taking history of baseball so that I would meet more guys on campus. You don't really think about what happens after the four years. I did not have a plan. It was trial and error along the way, and it didn't have to be like that. It could have been easier. And setting yourself up for success doesn't have to be hard. My biggest advice would be to just show up to class. Lisette Bohannon is a school counselor at niche.com. I learned this the hard way. I would never skip class. And really, when you're skipping class, you're just wasting money. Taking your education seriously while you're in school is important. Try to read before class. You are there to learn and you're there to gain that experience. You know, one of the things that was so interesting yeah. and talking with these two women who were best friends, and they said like they have regrets, but their best memories came out of those years, was that how different it is now for their kids. Because my biggest, I mean, the thing I'm most proud of is that I was, which people might look of at, as a regret, yeah. is that I made mistakes. Yeah. And I was allowed to make yeah. mistakes yeah. and I failed. And mine was public, um, <laughs> but that their kids don't feel like they can fail, but they, you know, because everything is on social yes. media.
What about you guys? I mean, I feel like my regrets from college were I was someone who just crammed for tests and yeah. just spit out the answers as opposed to realizing it was a beautiful place to learn. <laughs> Look how you had to highlight. Which one is she? <laughs> the, you know the one. And also Ew. too much drunky oh. monkey. <laughs> but it was, but I did, I loved it. And I didn't have a plan. I didn't go in with yeah. a master plan. I feel like there's so much planning. The kids are going crazy. Well, and they're not being to, creative. You know, oh, I need to study abroad. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need more of these courses. I need to work. It's like, slow it down. Mm -hmm. I know. I, li I actually like this whole thing where people, do, if they can, do a gap year or something. Because yeah. I think it gives you a moment. Like, I, when I went to college, I, I didn't care about learning. I yeah. mean, I never read the books. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> well, actually, but lost wait, which yeah, is, actually, but, but which by is years time, later, I pulled it together. Yes. But I mean, in college, like I really, I did not read the book. I just did whatever it was, to, the bare minimum to just get a, a it's passing It's so grade. funny because that's when you so law, different than when you, you now. Well, you hit law school and you were top of your class, so something changed. Like, what was the thing that, that changed? changed um, fear, I yeah. think, you know, like just going there. And then also I was older. Yeah, I was well, like that's 27. Smarter. I was that's like, yeah. and I had, at that point, I'd worked for five years, so I did teach it, treat it like a job. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was like kind of just too young. I didn't even think about well, college. Well, that's what everybody says is that college is wasted on the young. Because yeah. by the time you get, I mean, I, my the way I studied was so different my freshman year than then opposed to my senior. senior my year. senior, I took all the great teachers. You my freshman, teachers. really hard ones. My that's freshman, I was like, what's the class that can give you an A? You know, yeah. it's the yes. easiest yes. class. Yes. And that's interesting to choose. I like that advice, though. Choose the teacher, not necessarily the subject. Yes. Because you could fall in love with the subject if you like the teacher. And if you, and you find out who the master teachers are at your schools and take them. That's yeah. a good yeah. piece of advice. Right. That's cool. Boost. Up next, meet the remarkable mother-son duo who recently graduated college together, making good on a promise made 20 years ago. When Emmanuel Patton was just five years old, he made a promise to his mother that they would one day finish school together. Well, 20 years later, the big moment came when Emmanuel and Carolyn, as you see here, received their bachelor's degrees and college diplomas at the same time. And they're with us this morning. We wanted to congratulate them right here on the couch. Good morning to you. <laughs> Good, morning. Good morning. Is it still, is, does it feel real? Uh, kind of. Kind of? Really yes. Okay. So when you guys were both walking across the stage together, that graduation uh, stage, let me start with you, mom. What did it feel like for you? Uh, it was a, an awe moment for me, you know, uh, exciting, nervous, Emotional, but I held back the tears. Um, but I really wanted to just <laughs> cry because we actually arrived on this journey, mm. you know, yeah. to for somebody who didn't want to go to school, didn't want to finish. But education is all around me. Between my aunt, who uh, who's a high school uh, teacher, and she's constantly pushing about school and education, but. I was concerned about my children, mm. you know, wanted them to have the best 
and treat them with royalty and encourage them that they can do this. They can't just stop at a high school diploma, can't just stop at an associate's degree. Mm -hmm. They gotta keep pressing their way because once they get it, can't nobody That's take right. that away. That's right. And Emmanuel, do you remember going back to kindergarten when you made that promise to your mom? Yes, uh, it was back in the seat of the car and I remember she was driving and I was just telling mom, I always see my mom just she helps everybody else. She's working with everybody, making sure everybody has what they need. And I just want to make sure my mom has everything. So it just came to me. I felt like God led to me and said, mm. you know what? Make sure your mom has what's best for her. And so I looked at my mom and I said, Mom, I'm going to make sure one day you and me, we're going to graduate. Unless Aww. she got it before me, but she didn't. So I was like, okay. And time came and then we finally... You did it. Up. You were a perceptive yeah. little guy back then, wasn't he? Uh, so <laughs> all the time. You know what? We've got a couple minutes left. There are so many people who will be watching, and perhaps moms or dads who understand what you've been through. They put their own lives and dreams on hold, yes. right? Because yes. you want your kids to succeed. So yes. I know how hard was it to get back in there, go back to class? I mean, you know what I mean? Like, imagine yeah. sitting back in there listening to professors. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like, it, like for it you? It was really hard. I, I remember one of my professors was a uh, philosopher, and um, I wrote him, emailed him, and told him, I did not sign up to become a philosopher. I just want to get a decent grade. <laughs> yeah. And he says, well, I'm not trying to make you a philosopher. I just want to make sure your paper is really good. I said, I just need to pass to get out of here so I can graduate on time with my son. He says, yes, ma'am, but this is what we have to do. And so they were just critiquing. Um, you it did was it. an experience uh, going back to school and, you know, the discussions and the responses and the papers and mm. doing the APA citation mm. and references. But, you know, with uh, God and prayer and faith and my son, mm. and sometimes I would, you know, call, you know, on other people on the outside to help my uh, son's former uh, babysitter, mm -hmm. which is like a grandmother to him, Miss Greta Anderson, she constantly says, you can do this. I want you to finish. Mm. And so. And so what's your advice to people today? Because I know you guys, there's obviously an age gap, but your story <laughs> sort of tracks. You guys yeah. kind of went back and forth with school and college. Yes. So what's your advice to people who maybe are a little bit older and people who are still younger trying to struggle to finish? Don't ever give up. Have faith. Believe that you can do it. Uh, apply yourself. Keep pushing, even if it takes one class at a time. Mm -hmm. um, sometime if you can put in to get in two classes, try it. But it's nothing impossible for you to do. The sky's the limit, um, but you got to believe it and just keep pressing your way and please do not quit. I love that. Well, we're on a national morning show. What do you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so grateful um, that we are here and this experience and, and exposure and to be with my son and to see his promise and dream come true. I, I love him so much and I'm so thankful for him and my daughter. But for him to get me here, oh, uh, try not to cry. <laughs> you can cry. I'm okay. trying to be strong as I possibly yeah. can, but this is so surreal. This is beautiful. Right. And from one family to the next, Tiffany achieved her graduation dreams with the help of her parents and found a powerful way to thank them for the sacrifices they made. Just after the graduation ceremony at New York's Fordham University this spring, 22-year-old Tiffany Ferreira was celebrating. But in this emotional moment, it wasn't just about her own success. She was honoring the people she says made it all possible, her parents. But there she is, putting the cap on her mom, Andrea, then taking off her gown and wrapping it around her dad, Wellington. <laughs> the special gesture moving her little sister, Lauren, to tears. Lauren. In that moment, what were, what were the feelings? It was just like a beautiful moment to share like all of the hard work that she, not only she did, but my parents did for her. They didn't um, go to college. It wasn't just your degree. I wouldn't have the degree without them. All their hard work, their support, all their love throughout the years. Tiffany's parents came to the U.S. from Brazil in the 90s. 
and like so many immigrants, sacrificed so the family could lead better lives here in America, always putting an emphasis on education. What have your parents had to give up to, to get you to that graduation? So my dad worked in construction and painting, my mom in housekeeping. They literally sweat every single day and just provide us with everything we need to succeed. And you wanted to say thank you. Oh, definitely, yeah. Their American dream finally realized when she became the first in her family to get a college degree. Tiffany hopes her story will help other children of immigrants to imagine what might be possible. I think that being a first generation college student is difficult. So many students may think, oh, because my family didn't, I'm also unable to go to college. And I really hope that, you know, this video now um, inspires people to try. They can do it. Coming up, tis the season for graduation speeches. We'll take a look back at some inspiring messages from Taylor Swift, Tyler Perry, and more. Stay with us. We are taking a dip into the vault to look back at some inspiring messages shared with last year's graduates, including our very own Craig Melvin. It's official, you may call me Dr. Tyler Perry. <laughs> yes, a doctorate without a student loan, I'll take it all day long. I am uh, beyond delighted. Uh, the first five speakers that you asked had a conflict. I am elated to be here with you today as we celebrate and graduate New York University's class of 2022. You might think that there's something special about your speaker, about me, but really there isn't. I crammed for tests just like you guys. I wish I had more friends. I felt misunderstood. The future of our country and our world will be shaped by you. When you imagine your future and the winding path that is laid out before you, remember that the question you should ask is not what will happen, but who will I be when it does? Every one of you is an influencer and you make history every single day. And this moment is only the beginning. It is the end of one part of your life, but it is the beginning of the rest of your life. You missed out on some things, but you did something that is going to serve you quite well on this journey that we call life. You adapted. You made the best of it all. Sometimes the right thing to do is to throw out the old schools of thought in the name of progress and reform. Sometimes the right thing 
to do is to sit and listen to the wisdom of those who have come before us. Fear and certainty, they're an illusion. So is the belief that you are small or that someone else is bigger, better, or braver than you. There is nothing that will, get, that will get in the way of creating a life you want except you. People ask me all the time, what is your key to success? Is it talent? No. Is it luck? No. Is it even being smart? No. To the class of 2022, the key to success is persistence. Seize opportunities when they reveal themselves. Love with all your heart. Never give up, but allow yourself to fail, please, because you can't succeed without effing up now and then. Be curious, not cool. Be virtuous and purposeful. Do good things. Help others. Do not get frozen in the ice of your own indifference. We're doing this together. So let's just keep dancing like we're the class of 22. Congratulations on this tremendous achievement. Congratulations. 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 You did it. Go and be great. Be great. one more video that's sure to leave you with a smile. Check it out. We have a little guy who's got you covered. Yes, sir. Oh. Oh. I know, I'm kind of picturing Bruno Mars right now watching this kid. The moves are down pat. He knows the lyrics, some of them. He knows the dance moves. But watch when he stops. And goes. Oh, yes. hey. the beat. By the way, 8 million views. That's almost Chanel Jones. Oh, oh. That is it for today. Congratulations to the class of 2023. We cannot wait to see everything you guys will achieve. We will be back tomorrow with more on The Boost on Today All Day. Hey everybody, welcome to Start Today. We're almost halfway through the year and our Start Today community still going strong. More than 140,000 of you have joined our Facebook group and we're continuing to grow every month. Well, on this episode, we're gonna share empowering stories from our community members, fun workout exercises we can all do at home, and simple ways to eat healthy. This is Start Today. First up, Today Fitness contributor Stephanie Mansour and two of our members helping us kick off this month's walking challenge. Check it out. 
Jeff, let's start with you. What can you tell us about this this made plan? I understand it also has this journal tracker thing. Yes. So who likes old-fashioned journaling? I do. I do. Okay, don't I don't. Do. So what I did for Right. So what I did no for this there. month <laughs> is I created a habit tracking journal that just has a few questions as prompts. So if you're someone that comes home after a long day, you're trying to unwind and relax. Maybe you have an unhealthy habit. Maybe you're sitting on your phone or you're sitting in front of the TV, vegged out for a few hours. Hours, yeah. And before you know it, the night's escaped you. Mm -hmm. So I want you to really take a closer look at these unhealthy habits and see how we can replace them with a healthy habit, such as walking or maybe strength training or yeah. something else. So this habit tracker is huge for me. I love that. Okay. And Gail, you were saying, yeah, walking has done wonders for you, right? It has. How has it made a difference in your life? Well, um, we went on a family vacation, mm -hmm. and to keep up with my grandkids, that ranged from 18 to one year old, I had to start walking. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be left in the, you know, yeah. I love So it. it's done a lot for me. It's also helped me with my weight. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I have more to go. And my stamina. I love it. You have a question for Stephanie about your routine. What is it? I do. I have a really, really bad habit. Um, I always at night get a yearning for a sweet. Ooh, me oh, you're not alone. Salty. That's my thing. Well, the club. Yeah, all I of us. I can't keep chips. I can't keep cookies in the house. So I mm -hmm. wonder what I could do to break this habit. Yeah, well, you know, craving something sweet at the end of a long day is very, very common. I mean, this happens to me, too. Yeah. So two things. One, maybe it's been a long time since you've eaten lunch, so you want to have an afternoon snack so that it holds you over till dinner. But secondly, I want to introduce something else that you can use as a reward, and that is movement. So okay. we're going to do an exercise here. We're going to do a knee lift, and what this is going to do is it's going to take our mind off of the sweet craving, okay? Really? So, sure yes. That. So you're going to balance on one <laughs> foot. and. One thing that most of us don't realize is we need to pick a point in front of us a few uh, feet in front that's not moving to help with balance. Now, who's thinking about sweets right now? Me. That's true. <laughs> We're not thinking about trying to balance. Right, it. exactly. And many of us forget to engage our ab muscles during this exercise. Okay. So pulling the navel in towards the spine, bringing the knee up. You can pause at the center if you want as you lean forward. 10 on this side and then 10 to the next side. That's and fine. really reward yourself by feeling good about yourself, feeling proud of yourself, and feeling like you accomplished something. Ooh. Thank you. Yes. Okay. That is true. <laughs> In that moment, I wasn't thinking about sweets. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Elizabeth, now you, 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 you meditate, you run marathons, uh, but, but there's one thing you think occasionally about that l you lose your time and opportunity. That's right. What's that for stuff? Um, I made a commitment to wean myself off social media. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. Good for but, you. <laughs> but old habits that I had. Um, so when I find myself on my phone, surfing the net, mm -hmm. and getting caught up on my regular sites, what would you suggest mm. to help me break that habit too? Yeah, you know, that's very common. And at the end of the day, we all suffer from decision fatigue. We've mm. made so many decisions mm. and social media makes the decision for us. That's it chooses it. what we it, see yes. next. Yeah. Yes. So I actually, instead of what everyone else says, and that is just throw your phone, I want you to use your phone oh. and get down on the ground. And we are going to focus on a move that you can still scroll. It's going to be a little bit more complicated, though, to okay. scroll while we okay. move. But okay. hold that phone. Nice job, Elizabeth. Squeeze those inner thighs together. Roll back halfway, abs in tight. We're going to twist to one side oh. and twist oh. to the other. While oh. you scroll. Yes, while oh. you scroll. <laughs> so I'm not taking away the unhealthy habit. We're, That's not, funny. we're not cutting it cold turkey, but we're allowing Allowing you an opportunity to use the phone, sort of like you would a weight or a little kettlebell here. Good. Yeah, I'm glad you like it. Steph, thank yes. you. You're welcome. <laughs> Elizabeth, thank you. I love that. <laughs> nice job. Up next, one start today member sharing how she took charge of her health and changed her life. Plus, what we all need to know before starting a summer diet. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, everybody. One member of our Start Today community has undergone an incredible health transformation. About a year ago, Missy Gillenwater took charge of her life and wait till you see the results. But first, here's her story. Throughout my life, my weight has been a constant struggle. To make matters worse, the pain started overtaking my life in the second half of 2021. My mouth, head, and throat hurt so much I was exhausted all the time. Finally, I was diagnosed with acid reflux, and that's when my transformation began. My doctor advised me to modify my diet by cutting out fried and fatty foods, and it worked. I focused on eating fresh vegetables and lighter meats. I realized I could improve my health even more. So I started walking. I was 277 pounds, and even walking one mile was difficult. I persisted and added miles each day. I started posting my walks on Facebook and my friend Laura suggested that I join the Start Today group. In the group, I've received so much encouragement and motivation. Today, I walk 10 to 13 miles a day and I haven't missed one day of walking over the past 13 months. My energy levels and self-confidence are higher than ever and I'm so excited to keep going on my journey. So that was Missy before, in her own words. Let's see her now. Missy, come, come on, on out. Yay! Yay! Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, How are you? Welcome, Missy. Good, Good to see you. Good to see you. Congratulations. Thank you. you look great. Hi. So you look have a seat. Great. Thank have a seat. you. Make Thank yourself you. at home. So what was, what was the biggest challenge for you, Missy, getting started? I mean, because this, um, it seemed like it was so overwhelming. I've always, my weight's always been fluctuated up and down. And like I said, I weighed 277 pounds. Wow. And um, being diagnosed with the acid reflux mm -hmm. just kind of kicked me into gear to start walking. Um, I was really miserable with the symptoms mm -hmm. from the acid. Um, it like made my mouth feel raw all the time. Mm -hmm. And I went to um, an ear, nose, and throat doctor. Uh -huh. And as soon as he looked at my mouth, he said, you have acid reflux. Oh, wow. And I said, tell me what I need to do because I'm tired of being sick. Because mm, I'd been sick. It's uncomfortable. Yes. Mm -hmm. I had been sick with that for like four or five months prior and not knowing what, mm -hmm. what was wrong. Mm -hmm. And um, so I left there that day and I said, I, t I told him, I said, tell me what I need to do. And he's like, well, you want to change your diet. And I said, what foods do I need to cut out? He said, fried and fatty foods. Mm -hmm. And... Um, exercise. Yeah. I said, okay. So I did my own kind of little research and figured out what I could eat and what I couldn't eat. And then I just started walking from there. Hmm. Wow. So when it, when it comes to walking, I feel like it's always, I could do it tomorrow. I could do it tomorrow. I mean, how do you get yourself started? What was that first day like for you? It was rough. Mm -hmm. I weighed 277 pounds and it took me 25 minutes to walk a mile. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you I could have. You, you did, did it. it. I could. I was going to say I could have easily given up, but I didn't. You did not. Yeah. Did not. How soon before you started to be able to knock some time off of that mile walk? Well, the first two months after I cut everything out, I lost 25 pounds in the first two mm. months. Wow. That's and was that motivation to really kick it yes. into gear? Yes. Yes. What a good example you are for the rest of the Start Today community. What, 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 do you, what would you tell them? is the biggest difference you notice about yourself from 277 to today? More confidence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More confidence. I have more self-confidence in myself. Um, I just feel better. Mm -hmm. yeah. More energy. I mean, I walk 10 to 13 miles a day now. That's amazing. Wow. You look terrific. Wow. And, and there's I just, just one picture back there of you with, yes. with your former big jeans. Yes. It's one of the greatest moments anybody yes. ever gets to feel. Mm -hmm. I was a size 24 in pants, and now I'm a size 12 to 14. Oh, my. Wow. Amazing. Well, Missy, thank you so Good much. For you. Congrats, thank Missy. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank real you. inspiration. So happy you're here. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Missy, we are so proud of you. Well, many of us are thinking about ways to look and feel our best. Here's registered dietitian. Vanessa Rossetto on what we all need to know before starting that summer diet. Okay, these are the key questions before you start falling for things yeah. you might see online here and there. Yes. The first one is fundamental. Is it safe? Correct. Is it safe? A lot of people try to cut calories yeah. and they think like, oh, my friend eats a thousand calories a day, so mm -hmm. I should do that too. So like some general rules of thumb, you should divide your weight by 2.2 Okay. times that by 25. So oh. pretend you are 150 pounds. Okay. Your kilograms would be 68 times 25 would give you 1,700 calories a day. Oh, for 
to figure out to your figure calorie, calorie, calorie how many you should have. So okay. maintaining would be seventeen hundred, and then you wouldn't want to go below about thirteen hundred. Okay. okay. Right. Also, what are these heavy restrictions? If we're yeah. omitting anything, yeah. if we're only drinking water or yeah. special juices, it's no. probably not good. That's so. Let's not do that. All right. Which brings us to the next panel, which is: Is it sustainable? Because some things you can do for a day or two days, yeah. and then that's it. But you actually need fuel to function. That's right. So please, everyone eat protein and fat. You need yeah. that to yeah. fuel your body. Also, fiber and hydration. The things that people don't realize in the yeah. summer, digestion is slowed. Oh, okay. So what will help to speed I it up? Yeah. Fiber, fiber and water, okay. right? So these are ways for you to help yourself in the summer. And also, fiber helps with weight management. So if you're eating extra vegetables mm -hmm. and fruits at you know, lunch and dinner and a snack, you're going to be able to get to that goal. What is enough protein and yeah. fat? Again, it does depend. Yeah. So on average, fat is about 20 to 35 percent mm -hmm. of your ca like calorie requirement. And then the protein, back to that calculation, it could be anywhere from 1 to 1.2 grams per kilogram. Okay. So if you were 68 kilograms, then you would have about 68 to about 82 grams per day. And for context, four ounces of chicken is 31 grams of protein. And how about hydration? Should you, how much should you be drinking? Guys, we need like 90 ounces of water. Which is how much, mm. how many cups? Yeah, so it's, it's more than eight cups. More. More okay. than eight cups, right? And so oh. what I like to do is get a 32 ounce container and then I just fill that up two One times. One of those big two to jugs that yep. people walk around with. Yep. Okay. okay. <laughs> Our next question, is it balanced? Yes. When you said 25% fat, I was like, great, just eat a bunch of french fries, but not all <laughs> calories yeah. are created equal. Not all calories are created equal. So guys, like, let's not omit certain food groups. Okay. Also, everyone, carbs are not bad. They are our major energy source, please. Yes. We need them for fuel. I know, but we're also scared of carbs now. We're scared of carbs because no one taught us how to eat them, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what is the appropriate amount for you? And what does a carb mean, right? One slice of bread, a half a cup of rice. And so when you get your mind around that, it's easier for you also, to digest. And also, by the way, there are carbs in lentils. There That's are right. carbs in avocado, yeah, there are things carbs you wouldn't think about. In broccoli, yeah, right? They're <laughs> so just different kinds they're different of carbs. They're kinds of carbs. So it's not always bread and cookies. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's move down to this one. So this is a good one. Is it realistic for your lifestyle? Because we all go out to dinner, we go to restaurants, you might have this regimen, and some people are like, I can't go out to eat, I'm on this special diet. Right, and so that's not fun, and nobody no. wants to hang out with you. <laughs> so... <laughs> so Think about what your limits are. What yeah. is your life like? And how do you really want to incorporate that? And right. then is there really a better way? If you're this really busy mom with a big job and you're cooking for a family of yeah. six, then how is this all this restriction going to work? Are yeah. we buying all these separate meals for people? And then that becomes cost prohibitive. So really, what is going to be sustainable long term mm -hmm. without having you lose your mind? Okay. <laughs> and then, I mean, that, you just brought it up, cost. Because yeah. is it affordable? I mean, sometimes it's more expensive. It's often more expensive to eat healthfully. That's yeah. right. That's right. Because when you think about these fads, right, it's like a juice cleanse. Yes. And like, you, know, you have to buy the whole system. And then that's costing you hundreds of dollars over the month. Mm -hmm. And then it's not sustainable. So then mm -hmm. all that money goes by the wayside. So you want to do the math, like, can I achieve the goal while not blowing up my pocket? And then also mm -hmm. there are professionals out there, right? A dietitian, most of us take insurance. Wait, what? Yes, dietitians take insurance. Oh, I didn't know that. And the cost is probably a copay. You yeah. all have the benefit. So seek out Use help. It. Use yeah. help. Just like you go to the doctor, you go to the dentist, go to the dietitian. Okay. And then you would do all that hard math over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would do it for you. Okay. Yes. Vanessa, thank Vanessa, you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Coming up, time to get moving. We're going to show you some workouts we can all do right at home. And then later, how to add a healthy spin to our favorite comfort foods. It's the best of both worlds. We're back right after this.
We've got more start today and some exercises just about any of us can do. All you need are some light weights and socks. It's going to make sense in this workout from solid core instructor Jamie Ford. All right, let's get into it. So we could do these at home. These are all at home workouts. All you need is socks or if you have some little towels, okay. that's okay. all you need. All right. okay. So we're going to jump straight into it. I want you to think low impact, high intensity workout. Like that. So I know you have an injury, Al. Yeah. This stuff is really safe. It's really good for joints where you might not want that high impact mm -hmm. like running or cycling. Okay. So let's get into it and I'll show you what's going on. Okay. So let's grab our dumbbells okay. and then place, especially because you don't have socks on, place your foot on the towel. Mm -hmm. We're going to do what's known as a platform lunge. You may have seen reverse lunges or split squats in other workouts. This is kind of similar but less impact. So you're going to slide on that towel. Exactly, you got it. Nice now. And then slowly rising up. Oh. Now the key to this is moving slowly. Well, I guess it's because our time. aim feel it. is to get to muscle failure, right? Mm. So you have to stay on a constant tension. Wait, the aim to is to, to get, get to that. muscle failure? Yeah. So like you know when you go to a gym, fatigue. Exactly, like you know when you go to a gym and you pick up a really heavy weight that's mm -hmm. too heavy and you're yeah. like, oh, my muscles shake. That's essentially what you're trying to do to Sorry. your legs. Wow. Yeah, so if you okay. stay on this front leg for a long okay. enough time. Yeah. And how about the dumbbells now? Let's work that So the in. dumbbells, yeah, we take it down into a hinge, okay. relax the back legs, so you have a little bit more support, mm -hmm. and you're gonna row it in towards your hip bones, right? Okay. We'll call this a kickback, where you swing oh. the back of the arm. So straightening okay. up that elbow. The tricep work. Exactly, it's flexing that tricep mm -hmm. muscle, which is exactly what you wanna feel. And how many reps do you do on this? So let's yeah. say we wanna work for time, yeah. rather than reps. We want to think like, okay. let's say a minute of working consistently mm -hmm. until okay. your muscles shake. Okay, let's head over here. I do feel that. Go over to the mat. Okay, okay. The mat and these work. are all things you can do at home too, which Absolutely. is what's so uh, you don't need a lot of equipment. And just totally a little a lot bit safer. Know, you're right? not doing That's like jumping. And okay. If you live in an apartment, you're going to be a lot safer. You're not going to be annoying all the people below. Right, right. right. <laughs> so let's get into a side plank. Okay, so I'm just going to stand here. Yeah, I'm like, I can only do one arm. Yeah, we're all like messed up. Double okay. stacking the knees. If my friends arm. at home, maybe that want something a little more challenging. Okay. You can try toes. Oh my God. In front of okay. 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 Oh yeah. Okay. Now the top hand is going to come up towards the ceiling, and then you're going to reach really underneath you towards Ooh. the back oh. of your mat. Find that twist, and then reach back towards the sky. So that's going to turn on those obliques. Oh like yeah. Stabilization wow. of the shoulder, and even your glutes. Right. Mm. Keeping your hips. Ooh, after I Sonoma, my body's sides. like, what's happening? <laughs> um, just switch. I was just yeah, about to say. And how long do you do that for, Mother Shoulder Muscle? So again, depending muscle on failure. Muscle failure. Muscle failure. Muscle failure. Muscle failure. Muscle failure. All right. The shape, you're like, okay, I, I need to Jamie, like thank you okay. so much. Them. Don't forget to join our Start Today Challenge. Scan the QR code below or head to today.com slash start today. Of course, we need to fuel our bodies after a workout. Well, today, health and nutrition expert Joy Bauer recently joined us on the third hour for Superfood Friday, showing us healthy alternatives to some of our favorite foods. Okay, okay and so we are starting with crackers and cheese. We love them. Cheese They're and crunchy crackers, for and sure. indulgent. So instead, I am serving up Cucumbers, Cucumbers and cheese. slices and cheese. And it's, it sounds a little kooky, but I'm telling Let you. Let me hold it. I need to fix Craig's face. Come yeah. try a cucumber Come over and here. cheese, please. I, no, I want you to try no, one of these. Why are you mad? Here's the thing. I know but what this he's is The cucumber is sturdy and crispy and refreshing. But I just like the cracker. And it has Go. significantly less calories, carbs. Those are pretty good. Right? I'm really good. As oh, you got a little hummus in there. Yeah, Katie yeah. put a little hummus in, which that's I thought was idea. brilliant. So less calories, less carbs, and less sodium. So for anyone good. that's looking to drop a few pounds, steady their blood sugars, or cut back on salt intake, Thank you, Joy. cucumbers are your best okay. friend. I'm confused okay. about this one. Okay. BLT. So a classic BLT is bacon, lettuce, and tomato. So what I'm promoting okay. is a BST, oh. bacon, spinach, and tomato. Oh, because I was like, they look the same. The and they taste the same. And here's the thing. When you do, delicious, right? I do love a BLT. Yum. Oh, excuse me, BST. BST. <laughs> <laughs> when you do a comparison, a side-by-side -side comparison of iceberg lettuce to spinach, I'm telling you, is spinach it? is going to crush Matter? the competition okay. on every level. level vitamins, minerals, good. antioxidants. And you could still eat the mayo. Iceberg lettuce is really a useless lettuce. I've There's, said this yeah. for years. But if people mm -hmm. like the crunch, the crunchiness I mean, right. of the iceberg, I would say, Keep it in and layer the spinach leaves Ooh, on top that's of good. it. Good. I yeah. didn't realize what a swap that would be. Okay, moving on. Okay, it's getting warmer, mm -hmm. so I wanted to talk about ices, cherry ices. We love them, especially in the summer months. Instead, though, with all of that sugar, da 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 dum. 
frozen pitted cherries. And guys, oh. these are like hidden gems in the freezer aisle of your market. What? No, no, no. You need to Once pop one again, in. Pop one in. No, pop I one in your mouth. Listen, all I'm saying is if, if, if my six year old <laughs> comes to me and is like, Daddy, give me a popsicle, and I'm like, no, no, here, have a frozen cherry. Wait, can I? But they may like it. Wait, what if you stick a stick in it? My kids, <laughs> no, no, no. My kids go crazy over these. Right, wait, since they can I younger, please put that on a t shirt? That is good. And, and here's the, there's no sugar okay. and there's no concerning colors or dyes. I always have That's a stash in my idea. freezer. I put them in a mug. I pop them in my They're like little balls of goodness. Little balls of goodness. Yes. Who doesn't want yes. that? And the I, kids love them. It's all about presentation. Them. What would exactly. they know the difference? So, Joy, let's talk about So, if you okay. love French fries, you might like... Da -da 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 -dum. Carrot fries! Woo! Carrot fries have considerably less calories, carbs, of and they course. come with Don't. a big dose yes. of beta carotene. Really I want to say I love you. Complexion. I was going to say, I don't know about this one. But They're wait. really good. Oh, They're they really good. They, you know, really they taste good. like sweet potato fries. Oh, my gosh. They thought they were sweet potato they fries. They crisp up in the oven. This is like to taste it is to believe it. Wait, so. I almost like, I just want someone from the crew to try it. Come here. Seriously, because I think I don't this. want you to think that we're crazy. It's really no, good. No, because I did think I don't like them. I try like it. carrot fries, and but. you could eat them. It's good. Great big batch. What's that seasoning you put on there? Salt. No, that's it. <laughs> that's it. No, I did salt. Olive oil no, right? Katie, there's something else no, on there. No, olive oil. Last one. Is that this is the biggest paper. swap of the morning. Yeah. If yeah. you okay. like pizza, <laughs> you might like. No, oh, stop no. it. You will like. You will like pizza peppers. Basically, what we're doing is we're, we're building the cheesy, hearty, saucy, ooey gooey deliciousness yeah. into a bell pepper crust. So you get all of this vitamin C, you get some fiber, and again, fewer calories, fewer carbs. Like, yeah. this is a winner. I learned this from you, Joy, and I love it. Aren't yeah. these really great? And they're very, very Aloe. simple to make, too. These are really good. This is delicious. Oh, my Joy, I, I say this is a win. All right. right. <laughs> Just ahead, we got one more workout using foam rollers. Don't go away. Welcome back to Start Today. Now that we're all warmed up, let's keep it going. Soul Cycle instructor Lori Cole showed us some fun strength exercises. Today we're going to start with some balancing exercises. Okay. Which, after this pandemic, a mm -hmm. lot of us spent so much time at, the at computer, home, right? Yeah. And actually, a lot of us are working from home, and so we're not getting that commute. And we're not strengthening our posterior mm -hmm. chain. And our balance is off. Our balance is oh, off. Yeah. So that's really important to overall like balance in your body and harmony in your body. A body that is strong and a body that is balanced is mm -hmm. a body and a life that feels good. So we're going to start on one leg. You can choose which side. You're okay. going to bring the foam roller to the opposite side. You're going to use this foam roller as balance. Okay. okay. You're going to bring one leg up and listen this is more challenging than it looks you can start barefoot you can start with See? Mm -hmm. tennis shoes dylan thank you very much this is a hip flexor stretch. this is flexor. actually going to be a hip flexor stretch to okay. start so you're going to bring your oh knee over uh -huh. come on down as far as you can His pants are a little tight i know it's not easy it's not easy even if you're fit right it's not easy gentlemen so you can go. do this on either side to start before a workout That's i always good. it is That's good right good 
So we're starting there. Yes. Then, then we're gonna do some balancing here. Okay. So we're gonna bring our knee up, and you're gonna bring it back, and you're just gonna pulse right here for a few moments, and then bring like it back lunge. up, a lunge in the back, making sure that your knee is protected. Bring that knee up. Good, Al. Look at you. This Strengthening is, that post to your chin. You're gonna do both. <laughs> it's looking pretty good. Okay. You might want to keep it. But it's not so <laughs> easy, know. right? Oh, Jacob. No. Bring that leg up on the other side. Come on down. This feels nice. Now here's the other thing. Okay. You can if you don't have a foam roller for this part of the series, mm -hmm. you can use a chair. I was gonna say. You can use a counter. Mm -hmm. This is for anyone, anywhere. You could do it while you're boiling water. Uh, right? you, that's right. That's Wait, right. is that an inside joke? Or well, no? okay. what I that's She likes to exercise while she boils water. I do too. I do leg lifts on the counter. And you like the lunch. You look, I love the lunge because we're, we're just so underdeveloped mostly mm -hmm. after this pandemic. So bringing that knee up, coming into a curtsy, a little bit off that oh, mat. Curtsy. Oh. A little old mat. fashioned curtsy, bending, and you can kind of feel that standing leg mm -hmm. working oh, as feels, well as yes. the bent leg, right? Feels good. So you've got to get into that. If by working, area. you mean shaking furiously. A little bit spicy. <laughs> I like to call it, it spicy. Is. This so, is one of my favorites, Lori. This the quad roll. The quad roll. Okay. So why, why this, is this so crucial? So this is crucial because fascia, which is the connective tissue in our body, right? It's what holds up our structure. Come onto your forearms and then lift your feet off the ground. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. And come up and down. Oh, yeah. Al, oh, I'm so proud of you. Oh, go, come to the spiciest part. Oh, Are we five and for five? And lift your knees up. Wow. There, Boy. we're bringing oh, circulation. Maybe I should have taken my keys out of my pocket. Oh. <laughs> so much for oh. And nice. if you want to bring it through, come on down. Okay. Oh, nice. yes. Okay, I'm just going to really? stay down here. Good. You're, you're such good sports. <laughs> I think I just ripped something. Uh, for these moves Those and to pants. see all of Lori's fitness and meal plans, you can head to today.com slash start today. Yes, Lori, Al. thank you so much. I feel much. bad for the people standing outside the window right now. What a crew. What, what a crew. Style. And that does it for this episode of Start Today. Don't forget our online community growing by the day. All you got to do is scan that QR code to sign up for a daily dose of information fun and motivation in our Start Today newsletter. And you can connect with other folks on a mission to get healthy as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. And we had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Again, I almost got out of this one clean. <laughs> Turn it down. Oh my gosh, I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. And unfortunately for today's culinary coach and my dear friend, Siri Daly, she's experienced my kitchen chaos up close a few too many times. The biggest step is slicing it. Oh boy, come on, oh my gosh. Well, I'm ready to put that behind me. Now, Siri's gonna teach me some kid-friendly favorites, including mac and cheese and chicken tenders with a few special ingredients. Plus, I'm gonna learn, finally, how to make a perfect grilled cheese. The real test will be to see if our kids love what we make, and they are a tough crowd. But I'm excited to give it a try, so let's get started. Hi, Siri. Well, hello. Thank you for having me. We meet again in the kitchen. I know. Although usually you're doing the cooking and I'm doing the staring. Not today. Or the my drinking. Friend, not today. Well, you know that my kids don't have the healthiest of eating habits. I really do want to learn some basic things so I could feed them a decent dinner, maybe sneak in some vegetables. We can do that. Our plan for today is, first, Savannah will learn how to make a perfect grilled cheese. Then we'll cook the noodles for the mac and cheese, make the cheese sauce, bread and bake the chicken tenders, prepare a special sauce, and serve. Every Saturday, okay. Charlie wants a grilled cheese for lunch. I and season. I try to do it, but I end up, try I put it on the griddle, I put butter, then I end up, it, the cheese doesn't melt, but the outside is burnt. Right. I end up putting it in the microwave, it's a disaster. Okay. 
So here we go. We're going to start with our bread. Okay. I'm going to use some classic whole wheat, but we have sourdough here, Italian. I've even done it with English muffins, which is mm -hmm. kind of fun. I love that. And cinnamon raisin bread because I know Charlie has a hankering for that. <laughs> you choose what you would like. I'm going to okay. go, like I said, with just the regular kind of whole wheat. I'm going to try whole wheat too. We have salted butter here, just one side of the bread. Okay, okay? well, see, I do both sides. This is the sides. side that's going to go on the griddle, and okay. that will get it all nice and gooey and buttery and golden brown. You just basically want to kind of smother it and make sure you get it all the way up to the edges so that not a single piece of bread is without. But now if I did want to do your mayonnaise trick, I would do butter and then mayonnaise. Yeah, and, and oh. then maybe just do like a little less butter, a little okay. less mayonnaise so you're not, you know, smothering it. But I have found it does tend to enhance the flavor a little bit, but hmm. okay. there's nothing wrong with salted butter. All and right. you always keep your butter out on the kitchen counter, which shocked I, me. I thought you had to keep it in the fridge. I keep salted butter out. Salted butter tends to last longer on the counter. My grandma did that. My mom did that. And then it's nice and soft. Exactly. You're not like, you yep. know. Okay, I did mine. Okay. I beat you. Did I do enough? Okay, now we're going to use about two ounces of cheese, which is roughly like four slices. And this is a pretty gonna... thin slice. Like yes. some of my so, white American that... cheese is thick. Right. So if it's thicker, then maybe two slices. Okay. But, um, I'm gonna try four here, and again, okay, now, 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 what, we're gonna what? turn oh, shoot. this over, because we wanna do it, that's Ew. that's the side that's gonna go on the griddle, right? Okay. Okay. So, eh, already, already screwed right. up. It's all right, it's all right. This is pretty, like, forgiving is recipe. Is it okay that it's, like, hanging over the edges? I get kind of obsessy about that. You wanna get them just kind of right up to the edges, but okay. it's okay if it hangs off a little, because honestly, that's the best part. I don't know if your kids make you cut off the crust, um, but my kids do, and then, like, pro mom tip, you just eat it. <laughs> Exactly. So and that's your lunch. <laughs> yeah, and that's your lunch. Um, Enjoy. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna put it on the griddle carefully because it's hot. Wait, it's... what did we put on this? Nothing? No. No, no because no, no oil, no, no cooking the, spray. The butter is... is is basically your cooking spray. Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna not touch it for about two and a half minutes. You kinda wanna go slow and low, and then I'm gonna show you a little trick after that. Oh, by the way, we have some Oh, what is this? Some some spiked lemonade if you if you would like oh. to cheers. Now we're to getting our closer to cheeses. our reality. Yeah, exactly. Mm. We'll, have, we'll have regular lemonade for the children, yes, but um, there exactly. We go. Okay, so this is going on. Yes. We don't want to move it because that will disrupt the cooking process and we're really trying to get the bread nice and That's golden. That's funny cuz what I'd be doing is pressing this down. Press, press, yeah. press, press. Another thing, yeah. make sure you use a plastic spatula oh. because anything metal will scrape your griddle oh, or even okay. your nonstick pan. That's key. Okay. Then, let me show you our little trick. Okay, you have one over here. This is called a burger dome. Okay, so after we flip this, we're gonna cover it with our burger dome for another about two minutes. Okay. And that's gonna ensure that the cheese melts and gets oh. nice and ooey gooey and the bread still crisps. Could I put just like a glass lid of a half for a pot? Not glass. I would use again like a metal bowl or a pot. You could use a pot. Okay. So whatever you use, if it doesn't have a handle like this, use pot holders to remove it. Why is everyone warning me all the time about the pans are hot? Well, you know I know. Listen, I have I, I have burn marks from all my times in the kitchen, so you're not alone. Okay. Um I know. Right, we're hot. gonna flip them now. See, I find that you hard. You need to use yeah. your fingers. Oh, is that okay? Sure. Yeah, that's Ooh, that looks look. good. Look how pretty. Oh, wow. perfect. But now the now cheese is not press melted. It down a little bit. So that's why now we grab our burger domes. Mm -hmm. So our... right away goes the burger yep. dome. I'm going to get one of these. Right. That's it. I wonder where I've been going wrong. Maybe you're trying to do it too fast. I feel like a lot of people just want to crank up the heat. Yeah. And that will just burn your bread and your cheese won't melt enough. What if like, I wanted to add like turkey or ham yes. or something oh, this like is, that? Uh, this is just like your basic grilled cheese. Now you could add tomatoes, bacon, ham, turkey, anything. When would um, I add it in this process? In the beginning, right? right oh, yeah. okay. When you put on the cheese, you would add whatever else you want. All right, I think we're ready. Okay. Let's see. Ooh, look at, oh, look at the no. meltiness on the side. Yours is meltier than mine, but it looks well, good. Sometimes it depends on the cheese. Mm -hmm. I think that looks great. Okay. All right. Ooh, I mean, this truly yeah, does look, at look that. great. Just mm -hmm. slice it. You know what my mom used to make? Do you do triangles or rectangles? I like triangles, triangles, rectangles, or strips. Um, my mom used to do fried bologna a lot. Ooh. I know. It's very 70s. Mmm. Mm. That's mm -hmm. good, though. So good. Oh, my gosh. I'm a culinary genius now. We did it. Grilled Grill cheese. cheese. All right. I needed to know this. On to the next.
We're gonna make a baked mac and cheese with a special ingredient. There's going to be cauliflower blended into the sauce. I'm telling you, your kids will not know. Okay? Sneaking in vegetables. Yep, is the not name above of the it. Game. Not above it. So we have boiling water over here. Yeah. We wanna always season our oh, water yes. before. So you can generously season All right, with I'm the salt. I'm trying to get better at being generous. Okay. Because you're a very um, generous person. Yes, but not with salt. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you for the vote of confidence. I mean, like, I would normally have thought that's enough. More. Should we taste it? So the reason you want to salt it so generously, especially in this case, is the pasta's only cooking for six minutes. So it's not going to have a lot of time to absorb that. I think that. I need more. Let's just do more. I mean, you can. It should taste real salty. Yeah. Instead of using your finger. Yeah. Just, like, pour some in. Oh, that just seems so excessive. Oh, I can't. OK. How about right. that? Okay. Good, All good, right. good. OK, pour in. This is a pound of elbow a mac. A pound of elbow mac. So just take that wooden spoon and give it a stir a couple mm -hmm. times just to break up the pasta. You don't want it to stick together. Do I keep the heat on high? Uh-huh. OK. You should be good. OK. Now, for a nice little shortcut, mm -hmm. I have this cauliflower that you can steam in the microwave. That is cheating. It's not cheating. We are busy mothers. There is nothing wrong with it. <laughs> We're microwaving? We're microwaving it. Put it this side down so that the Scandal! microwave. Just do five. And that'll give us a good uh, timing on the pasta. I mean, if you want, you can always cut up your florets and steam it. Like, I've done that, obviously, but. You know what? I on know, a busy night? I know my way around a microwave. This is Monterey Jack, which mm -hmm. I'm going to take. That is cheddar, okay. eight ounces each. Okay. We are going to, I use the, yeah, the I big like side. I like the big side. Yep. I'm good on the grating until we get to the very end. Right. That's when you kind of just want to, you know, scoot your hands back as much as you can. I'm not gonna lie, my tricep hurts. I know. So then I, you don't have to go to the gym either. Oh, geez, this is I, like your fingers are getting awfully close. Just keep going with this. Put it down. Are you I'm scaring you? <laughs> yes. I'm scaring you a little bit. I'm scaring myself. Okay. See, like when I get to the very end, honestly, yeah. this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna break it up because again, okay. like little pieces mm -hmm. will not. Oh, see, yeah. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know why people are nervous. <laughs> Does the recipe call for blood? <laughs> I can't tell you. I think my arm's going to be sore tomorrow. Yeah. All right, well, now, there, what we're going to do okay, is yeah. we're going to reserve 3 fourths cup of the cheese. Can okay. it live together? Yep. OK. OK, we're going to put our cheese on this same sheet okay. pan to just make some room. Mine can come over yes. here. Oh, there's our cauliflower. So the cauliflower is going to let it sit for just a second because it's okay. hot. And why don't we drain the pasta? OK. All right. Let me guess, hot okay. pot. Ooh, it's heavy one, too. I know. So right into the okay. drainer. Just pour it all in. Yeah. Right? And then put some cold water, rinse the pasta, because that's going to stop the cooking process. Oh, OK. Yeah. Cold so water. So just cold water. It'll just stop the it? cooking. Yep. OK, it's not going to get too soggy? No. And then you can kind of just shake it, let it drain in the sink, and that's it. We'll leave it there while we make our sauce. So do you want to go grab the cauliflower from yes. the microwave? Ooh, I better just, bring it in case it's hot. Yeah, just Hold on to like the edges of the bag. Okay. Ah, just kidding. <laughs> Look, it says pick up here. Yeah, well, that's helpful. So convenient. That's friendly. Okay, now we are going to cut that open and we're gonna pour it right into the blender. So All right, that. so now we're going to add one and a half cup of milk. One and we half. have whole milk here. You can okay. use 2%, but I wouldn't go any lower than that just because it's gonna yeah. add flavor. Right. And it's helpful if the milk is at room temperature if Oh. It's not. You can always like microwave it for like 15 to 20 seconds. It'll just help when you make your roux that everything's kind of consistent. I fear kitchen machinery. Anything with blades is a little scary. Yeah. Does that seem good? That seems good. OK, then what? OK, so on. on. And then what? And we'll probably hit the puree button if your okay. blender has that. There you go. Wow. And we're going to let it go for just for a little bit. I always feel I have to hold it. Okay. All right, that's looking pretty good. I think we can stop it and just we want to blend it until it's really, really smooth and silky and creamy because any chunks might, you know, sound off the children <laughs> alarm. Alert, vegetable, <laughs> alert, vegetable. OK, Ooh, that, that looks milky. Little, that looks very I good, yeah. I think it does. Why don't you grab that butter All right. and we're just going to butter our casserole dish. Just How am I doing here. it? OK. We're going to, I mean, you can like use your hands. I would just hands, go like take but the stick I like and to, stick it around. Yeah, you could do that. Or I, or you could just kind of like scoop it up with this and let's get the sides Your in. way seems what? classier. <laughs> I just don't like mess. I'm just you know, I don't either. so OCD. You really there are. You Is that good? OK. Yeah. But that a little more. You like can do more. Yeah. yeah, like I like to yeah, get Yeah, I would get a good goop. I usually just take the perfect. sticks. Am I getting the sides, There's nothing too? wrong with taking the stick. Yeah, sides okay. and, and bottom. This is where my type A personality yeah, really comes yeah. in. I'm like, I don't want, I want every side done just yep. right. I don't want to mess it up, you know? I want to get perfect. an A. 
I want to get an A. A plus on buttering the casserole dish. Okay. okay. That's over. Now we're going to measure out one more cup of milk. Okay. There you go. Got it. Three tablespoons of flour. You can measure out and put in that little bowl. Okay. This is mise, or mise en place. Absolutely, wow. Or mise en place. <laughs> then we are going to start our roux. Um, I'll put the cheese over here just for okay. later. Um, okay, the first thing we're gonna do is get four tablespoons of butter, mm -hmm. and you can kind of okay. eyeball that. I, you know. Well, I can't, but I know that a, one stick is- It's about is a half, half of a stick. stick. Yeah. So it's like that. Perfect. And okay. just throw that right in the pot. I enjoy this part. Yeah. I just like to see how the butter skates around. It, you know? Right? It's really pretty. It seems like it's and having it a good time. smells good. Yeah. This is what cooking <laughs> should be. You can add the flour. We have to whisk constantly. That's why we love to have everything ready because this is kind of something you have to babysit. Yes. You don't really want to walk away at this point. Okay. Just make sure that you try to mm -hmm. avoid the clumps. Okay. Prop and then up. when add we the... add the milk, we're also going to do it sort of slowly. We don't okay. want to add it all at once. I like to dump it in, so don't because do that. Because we want to activate the flour and the starch. Does that look frothy we... to you? It's looking good, yeah. See how it's starting to bubble a little? Yeah. I like to... I, this is awesome. I'm so impatient. I just am like, let's get in there. Perfect. Now you can add some more. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is coming together. Yeah. And then next, we're going to add our milky okay. cauliflower I, mixture. But don't I want to get this a little smoother mm -hmm. first? That's good. Whew! <laughs> God, this is worse. Not since my Jane Fonda aerobics routine <laughs> have I worked out this hard. Yeah, but you probably okay. did that this morning. Right? I know, I'm like, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Add the cauliflower puree and stir to combine. Is this as little at a time Switch. thing? Like no, this? You, or can you, I just since dump you've it already on? added the, yeah, you're good to go now. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And Wait, it's this is, start to thicken. This is so right? sneaky. You would so never sneaky. know this is cauliflower. Yep. And then we're gonna add our cheese. Bring to a simmer. Now is this a simmer? Yeah, because see of... the bubbles starting to yeah. form. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Whisking constantly, cook for one to two minutes until thickened. Do you think that's thick enough? It's getting there. Another like way to tell is if like, once you kind of lift it, you wanna just see some of it, some of the remains on the spoon. I mean, this whole constant stirring. Yeah. It's like it a is, baby, you always have to be watching it. five minutes of, of like, Babysitting. Yeah. All it right. This seems cooked. Yep. So now let's add our cheese. Okay. All right. I'm just gonna dump it in. Okay. Yep. And then just continue to stir. I want to have a big splash. Okay. Perfect. Now I'm gonna get my stirrer out. Yeah. Goodbye, whisk. Goodbye, whisk. You've done a good job, but we're moving on. Okay. Mm, this is my favorite part. Yeah. Too. This looks pretty so yummy. Cheesy. Season with salt oh, to taste, but I'm not there ready for that. Here's yet. where we grab the Jeez. magic, magic spoon, spoon box. box. Do you want to taste it, or are you trusting me? I'm going to trust you. I trust your palate. I think it needs a little salt. Some salt. Go for it. Okay. Well, not a lot, though. Okay. That's pretty tasty. There you go. More? I mean, there's salt in the cheese, naturally, and so, you know, that's good. I mean, okay. I don't know. The salting thing is very um, perplexing to me. Now, I'm going to grab... Like, I don't want to over-salt, but pasta. I don't want to I know. That's why you can always, you know, you can... Now what happens? Put some on. Now, I'm going to break this pasta up just a little bit so mm -hmm. that... It doesn't clump together. Oh, you add the add pasta yes. to here, but uh -huh. it says remove from the heat, so I think I need to okay, turn it off. Okay, you want to turn it off? Yep. Okay. And then it's off. I kind of declumped the pasta so oh, okay. we don't splatter ourselves. I mean, this is starting to look Stir real good. We're gonna I would eat it just like this. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's going to get so nice and baked and crispy on the top, and mm -hmm. because we're going to add that cheese that we reserved. Mm -hmm. So I'm just basically trying to coat as much now. This is just about yep. stirring and coating. And then we can just pour it in because we can also kind of stir it up in here. Mm -hmm. oh, All right, I'm going to transfer it. Are you ready? Yep. Did you feel ready. good about that decision? Ready. Oh, I didn't taste I will it again, have a but sip I'm just going to Well, you transferred. Okay. I kind of like this. I'm not doing any work. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Trying to explain this to me is work. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. You got ready? it? Yeah. Yum. Yum. Ah, it looks so good. Okay. Now Yum. just sprinkle the top with this remaining mixture oh, with of the cheese. remaining cheese. Just okay. I'm gonna just eat some. Yep. While you do that. I love that. And this cheese will get kind of brown, probably, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna bake it in a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes mm -hmm. until it cooks all the way through, gets nice and hot and gooey. The sauce will thicken some more in the oven. Great. Perfect. Now, if I wanted to just stop it right here, cover it, and then bake it at a later yes, day, could, could I do, do that? that? You could absolutely do that. Okay. Put it in the fridge, even in the freezer if you wanted to, but in, in the fridge, just make sure you know you kind of let it sit at room temperature for a little bit before you put it in the oven, and it's good to go. Should I put it in? Yeah. 
Top oven. Okay. I'm so proud. Me too. <laughs> Remember that time? <laughs> okay. Good job. All right. High five. Yay! cheese is in the oven. Mm. Now we are going to make some Parmesan crusted chicken fingers. Yeah. Chicken tenders. My kids live on chicken fingers. Right. And so first we're going to set up a dredging station. So first why don't you grab the flour mm -hmm. and we're going to add three fourths cup to this pie pan. Mm -hmm. And I like to use pie pans mm -hmm. because it's just the perfect shallow dish yeah. with you know the ridged That's sides. a good idea. Yeah. Now we're going to use three egg whites. Have you ever separated I have. I okay. think I do know how to do it. Three do egg whites. Do you want me to do one with you? Or well, do you let wanna... me try okay, and you great. can grate me. And then, yeah, you can put the... Um, egg white. Egg white this. will go in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. Egg yolk. There you go. Oh, shoot. Okay. You got any extra eggs? <laughs> Just... And it's I know. okay. So it's this not isn't pretty. Like, this it's isn't... not pretty, but I can do it. Yeah. That's perfect. But I'm going to give you a little tip. Instead of cracking the egg on a side, crack it on the countertop. Oh, really? It'll it'll give you a more even shell. Sometimes when you crack it, there you go. Oh. When you crack it on the Oh my gosh, shoot, that's so much right? better. There you go. Wow, game change. Uh-huh. Um, okay, so now the panko, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we're gonna use about a Is cup that the of panko. Yep, that's okay. the panko. You can use breadcrumbs too. I just like panko because I feel What's like the it difference? Gets, gets a little crispier. This is a Japanese breadcrumb. Oh, okay. Um, breadcrumbs tend to just be more fine. One cup. And okay. I like the crisp that panko offers. Okay, good yeah, to know. So I, one, I actually always wondered what the heck yeah. the difference was. Okay. One and cup just sprinkling of that. it around. Okay. And then a third cup of Parmesan. Okay. Right there. Mm -hmm. And then you can use that whisk to kind of. Perfect. Okay. And just kind of combine that. So now our dredging station mm -hmm. is all set. Okay. Um, chicken. We have five or yeah, five chicken tenders here, which you can find at the store. Mm -hmm. If you don't find chicken tenders, you can always buy breasts and kind of just cut them into strips. Okay. So now, what am I doing? Just lay just it on the pan. Just lay it on here because it's just gonna be a vessel for us to season the chicken. So I'm not. This isn't the pan I'm gonna no. cook it. No. Okay. So I don't need to grease nope. it or whatever. Okay. Perfect. So it could be a plate. Could be anything. Yeah. And then um, season generously. The word of the day. <laughs> Both sides. Both sides. So you can okay. use those tongs to flip it over. Because this is really the only point, other than like the parmesan mm -hmm. that we're seasoning. Is that That's great. That looks great. I'm getting Perfect. more yes. like yes. liberal with I like my it. Okay. That's salt. Good. Awesome. Yep. And then turn it. Okay. Perfect. I guess you could okay. do pepper if your kids liked it, but 
It's always a little yeah. it's questionable. Exactly. With it. Is that good? That's great. Okay. That's perfect. All right. Okay. Now we are going to spray our sheet over there with some baking spray. Okay. Because then we're going to put it right on to our Are we baking these? Dish. Yes, we're going to bake that. Oh, we're not frying? We're not frying. Oh, that's I mean, healthier, you, right? You know, yeah. Okay. So first we're going to coat in the flour. You can just do one at a time. So I'm just dropping mm -hmm. it. How much? Just make sure just it gets a little just bit? coated on both sides. Like that's good? Yeah, that's okay. great. What about the sides? And no? then, okay, then to the egg whites. And I'm just coating both sides uh -huh. too? Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You can kind of like let some of that drip off because mm -hmm. sometimes it can get a little goopy. Perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then into the panko. Okay. Get that nice and coated. Yeah, this is the good stuff, yes. right? And you can, can yeah, then. perfect. Okay. That's good? Yeah. Okay. And just set it there. Set it down. And okay. Then and then here we go. Repeat. Ooh, it's the last one. There we go. This lucky guy is gonna get all this good stuff. Okay. All right. Into the bottom oven. All right. 425 convection oven. How long? 450. 450, like I said. <laughs> About 10 minutes. the chicken it's almost done yeah. we're gonna make a really quick special sauce you can call it Savannah's special sauce <laughs> so this is a cup of mayonnaise okay we're gonna add um, a fourth cup of ketchup okay any old ketchup yep and I'll you can like you know taste this if you like less ketchup if you like more mm -hmm. if you don't want ketchup it's just kind of a fun it's it, it just looks like the sauces you get at like fast food restaurants this uh, is a, a tablespoon? tablespoon of mustard you can use yellow Dijon. I feel like the Dijon can be kind of spicy for kids, so yeah. I stick with yellow. Kids like sauce. They like to dip. Yes. And just mix Dipping it up? Dipping is key. Yep. With the whisk or this little spatula? You can use that, whatever, yeah. Okay. Until it kind of gets that like pinky special. Oh my gosh, it is the so stuff that's yeah. on your fast uh -huh. food burger. Savannah's um, secret Savannah sauce. Savannah's secret sauce. <laughs> okay. So why don't you spoon that mm -hmm. into, mm -hmm. yep, there you go. Okay. And then, Done. perfect. That's good. Okay. Perfect. All right, now, why don't you go check on the mac and cheese? Okay. Because it's probably done, but what I like to do sometimes at the very end yeah. is just broil it. It's done. Okay, well, let's, let's, let me see. Let's just broil it for like okay. a couple minutes. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Because it'll just get nice and caramelized on the top. You just have to How make long? sure you watch your broiler because every oven's different. It could be like 30 seconds or it could be two minutes. What am so, I looking for? Just to get that kind of brown caramelization. But okay. while, while, why don't you grab the chicken? Because I think that that's done. Here, okay. Janita. Oh, you got it. Okay. When you tell me to watch the oven, I am ready to do it. <laughs> I'm ready to stare Stand obsessively. This there. looks good. Perfect. I can't believe we made this. You made this, Savannah. Correction. It looks yummy. Right, here, put it right oh. here. Okay. And then you can just take the tongs and okay. throw them on there. And then we'll check on our mac and cheese. It should be done. Ooh, nice and crispy. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And they look really good. They actually do. Okay, now we can grab the mac and cheese. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Does okay. it look good? Mm-hmm. Okay. Look at that little golden top. Perfect. Yeah, just gets it nice and, I love the crusty edges. A little broil. Okay. All right, you grab no, that. I still haven't learned this technique. I will well. grab, that was pretty good. Okay. I'll grab this. And we can eat. Yum! 
Okay, we Yum. did this. We did it. Let's eat like toddlers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this actually looks very good to me. I'm excited. Okay. So be careful. Can That's I serve, hot. Serve you up some. Yes, please. Look at how. Oh, you see? It's good. And look at that. It sounds all nice and mm -hmm. crusty. I'm going to see if I can taste a okay, cauliflower. Yep, flour. that's the real test. Well, the real test will will come. Will come. Let's see. Okay, I'm just going to use my hands to take some chicken. Put some mm -hmm. Siri Savannah special sauce. Yep. No, this is all yours now. You get to take credit for that sauce. <laughs> okay. Smells good. Bon appetit. Cheers. Bon Cheers. appetit. Cheers. Okay. Here's the test. All right. I'm going for the cauliflower. Me too. First. I just want to see. So hot. Hot and delicious. It's really good. It's so good. You can't tell. You cannot tell. Not one bit. Mm -mm. I'm just okay. going to get into this chicken. Should I dip then, it the way um, my kids would? No, yeah. Let's go classic. Whatever. You're right. You're right. All right. Mmm. It's good. So good. There is it no right. It tastes good. There's no right or mm. wrong when it comes to kid food. You are actually a delicious chef. So thank you for doing this silly kid food with me. But this is what I actually need to know. Mm -hmm. It's not silly. We have picky eaters combined. Yes. And so this is what we have to do. I mean, we have to have fun, interesting meals for them. It's good, and now I don't have to feel so guilty. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a triumph. There's only one thing to do now. You know what we have to do. Put it to the test. Put it to the test with the kids. All right. An I think excuse we'll... to get together. Exactly. <laughs> Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. Good luck. <laughs> to you too. <laughs>Good Monday morning, a weekend of heartache in Texas. Two communities grieving this morning and the search for answers is underway. It's May 8th. This is today. Shock and sadness. New details about the gunman who opened fire at a crowded mall near Dallas, killing eight people and injuring several others.